Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto create harem with Hinata and Ino council bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by LANCER2147 and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Prologue. Disclaimer. Unfortunately I don't own Naruto. Author's note. This is my first story, I'm not even a native English speaker, so grammatical errors can be expected. I'm writing this fic mainly as a challenge to myself, so being honest, I don't know how long it'll take for me to update another chapter, and I'm not even sure if I'll be able to complete this. Young Naruto Uzumaki, after another harsh day at the academy, where Sakura spurned him, Sasuke made fun of him, and Aruka scolded him, again, made his way to his apartment. His apartment was a small one room, which made sense since he was an orphan. The kitchen was clean because Naruto almost didn't use it, he preferred making instant ramen instead of actually cooking something, not that he knew how to cook anything. His bedroom was a simple one, he had a single bed, a small TV on the top of a cabinet, and a small wardrobe, filled with his orange jumpsuits, the green walls were dirtied, Naruto never cared about tidiness, and also never bothered to clean the walls or paint them. With exception of the small bathroom, the entire apartment floor was made of wood. Finally, reaching his small living room, which also served as his dining room, there were, besides the desk and chairs from the dining room part, a coffee table and an old sofa, where an unexpected visitor waited. The visitor was no one other than Hiruzen Sirotobi, he, alongside with A.M. and Tuchi Ichiraku, was one of the people that truly cared about Naruto. The aged man was wearing his traditional cage outfit. Naruto upon seeing the man he considered his grandfather quickly dropped his backpack and ran towards Hiruzen, hugging him. The Hokage made an habit of checking Naruto at least once a month, he already visited him last week, so Naruto was pleasantly surprised in seeing him at his living room. The reason that made the Hokage leave his office and his damned paperwork was to talk with Naruto about his academy performance. Naruto already failed the academy twice, and if he were to fail again he would be expelled from the academy. While most of the children entered academy at age 8, Naruto enrolled shortly after his 6th anniversary, so age-wise he wasn't actually behind his classmates. However Naruto grades were always bottom half, he couldn't use any ninjutsu or properly mall chakra, and his knowledge was abysmal to say the least. The only part of the curriculum that Naruto actually was above average were his tojutsu, where Naruto mostly excelled due to his willpower and stamina and stealth, where his pranking nature made him top 3, losing only to Sasuke, the last Uchiha, and Shino Aburam, the heir to the Aburam clan. Feeling that he was failing Minato, who already had his final wish of Naruto being regarded as a hero, denied by the sheer ignorance of the villagers, Saratobi decided to have a talk with Naruto. Naruto, please sit down we need to talk. The Hokage said, gesturing to the unoccupied seat beside him. After Naruto released the hug and went to sit on the sofa, he looked at the Hokage, clearly interested in his apparition. Clearing his throat Hiruzen looked at the sky blue eyes of Naruto. Naruto, I'm here to talk about your grades at the academy. Seeing Naruto's expression change from interest to sadness, the Hokage knew that something was truly bothering Naruto. I don't know what's happening Jiji, I tried to study, but the questions are always difficult, no matter what I do, I'm always making mistakes. Naruto said in a resignation. And you've paid attention to the classes. Yes, but the teachers are always ignoring me, like the rest of the village. Naruto said, the last part of the sentence in a mumbled tone so only Hiruzen could hear. Hiruzen felt ashamed of this, teachers who were supposed to help the students playing favorites and ignoring a student. Okay, I'll help you study, what was the subject of the class today? The Great Ninja War. I see, the first, the second or the third. Naruto looked dumbfounded at the Hokage, before shouting what? There was more than one. After looking at Naruto like he grew a second head, Hiruzen asked for him to show his academy book, already suspecting what was happening. The instructors were sabotaging Naruto. His suspicions were proven correct as he opened Naruto's book. The book was extremely old, probably from the early years of his tenure as a Hokage. Information was clearly lacking and with exception of the cover that was replaced to the one the actualized books had, every page was yellow of age, and several sentences were unreadable. Hiruzen then patted Naruto at his head and asked him to go to his office tomorrow after class so he would be able to help him. After leaving Naruto's apartment, Hiruzen decided that he would hide himself in class tomorrow, so he could see firsthand what the treatment Naruto received from the instructors was. Next day. Hiruzen made his way to the classroom after activating the Tantanjutsu, transparent escape technique, that allowed him to sneak upon the class and the instructors. Remaining transparent, the Hokage confirmed his suspicions of the teachers ignoring Naruto. During the ninjutsu training the trend continued when one of the teachers who were helping each student individually jumped Naruto, choosing to praise Sasuke for his mastery of the Kawarimi instead. 
by Naruto on surprised and emotionless expression, Hiruzen realized that this happened more than once. Finally at the Tejutsu practice, Hiruzen noted that the Tejutsu instructor was intentionally teaching Naruto a sloppy and ineffective Tejutsu instance that allowed him to quickly be pommeled by Sasuke at the final spar, much to the fangirls and the instructor's delight. A unique highlight of his visit was seeing that Aruka Yamino, one of the academy teachers who lost his parents during the Kyubi attack, helped Naruto at the shuriken practice. Seeing what he needed to see, Hiruzen retreated to his office. The Hokage knew that Naruto would visit him soon, so he quickly formulated a plan. Instead of punishing the instructors directly, he decided to help Naruto become self-sufficient so the young boy wouldn't need help from the instructors. This also applied to his normal life, if given the right guidance Naruto could easily live all by himself and well. Hiruzen, when visiting him last night noted that his apartment was dirty and that Naruto didn't feed himself properly. And finally, he could prove Danzo, who constantly nagged him about transforming Naruto at the ultimate weapon, and most of the villagers wrong and show through hard work and determination that Naruto wasn't the Kyubi. Hiruzen was taken out of his thoughts when the door of his office opened, revealing Naruto. Hiruzen quickly gestured him to take a seat, which the boy promptly agreed. So, how are you going to help me Jiji? Naruto before anything I must say something important. As Naruto nodded his head, showing that he was listening, the Hokage took a deep breath before continuing Naruto, the reason why you were falling behind your class is that the instructors were sabotaging you. Seeing the boy's questioning expression, here is in proceed I watched today's class and it came to my attention that the instructors, besides giving you outdated material, were ignoring you during the lectures and ninjutsu training and intentionally taught you a botched jutsu instance. Naruto stared blankly at the Hokage for a few seconds, then his expression turned to sadness, then angriness and finally despair. Why? Why everyone hates me? Naruto asked almost crying. Now Hiruzen was at a dilemma, he could invent a history or tell the truth. He knew that Naruto probably would accept the fake history, but Saratobi knew that if he did this, he wouldn't be better than anybody else. Stealing his resolve he made a decision that would change the fate of the entire world. Naruto what do you know about the Kyubi? It all made sense, Demonspan, Demon Brat, Damn Fox finally it all made sense to Naruto, he was Yinch Kriki of the Kyubi, the nine-tailed fox. Naruto first denied the fact, then he lost his words, then he accepted, after accepting Naruto realized. He was the Kyubi, he killed thousands of people and destroyed the village he now called home. After 30 minutes of crying Naruto looked upon the Hokage who was patiently waiting for Naruto to recompose himself. I'm sorry for everything I did Jiji. Naruto stated before getting up from his chair and running towards the door. But he was stopped when he crashed against the arms of the Hokage who quickly stood between Naruto and the door and engulfed him in a hug. After some more sobbing, Naruto asked why don't you hate me Jiji. The Hokage gave the Jinch Kriki a smile before getting up. He quickly withdrew a scroll from one of the bookshelves and laid it on the table. After this he drew a kunai and put it alongside the scroll. What do you see there? He asked pointing to the items. A scroll and a kunai. Naruto responded. Very good, they are different aren't they? He asked, getting a nod from Naruto. Now he continued, quickly sealing the kunai into the scroll what do you see? You sealed the kunai inside the scroll. Naruto stated. Very good Naruto, but tell me, just because there's a kunai sealed inside it, the scroll will stop being a scroll. Seeing Naruto shake his head negatively, Saratobi continued. Naruto, you're the scroll, the Kyubi is the kunai, you won't stop being Naruto, just because the Kyubi is inside you. Naruto nodded his head, showing that he understood. But then he frowned Jiji, if things are like you said why the rest of the village hates me. Well, they're blinded by the fear, most of them also didn't know about the quality of the seal, so they think that you are actually the Kyubi. The young blonde and the aged Hokage kept talking for a few hours. Naruto learned more about his seal, and the Hokage assured that the Kyubi wouldn't take over, as long as he controlled his emotions. Naruto also learned that the Yandane wished him to be viewed as a hero, but blind hatred made him into a scapegoat. Finally the Sandame explained about his law that prevented the adults about telling the kids about the Kyubi, so the children would see him as Naruto and not the Kyubi, and how it backfired as the kids mirrored their parents' behavior towards Naruto. By the time the two finally finished discussing the Kyubi topic, it was already night, and the Hokage offered to treat Naruto some ramen from Ichirakus. At the Ichirakus. Naruto and Hiruzen made their way to the Ichirakus, Naruto's favorite ramen stand. Even though Naruto loved Raymond, his affection to the Ichirakus was because here he was treated like family. Whilst the most expensive restaurants and even some stores refused to sell anything to Naruto, Tuchi and AM always treated him well. After placing their orders, which made Hiruzen frighten a little bit because of the sheer amount of Raymond Naruto ordered, they continued their conversation. Naruto, I'm going to ask a very serious question, and I'd like you to answer honestly as possible. 
This got Naruto's attention, as he perked up and looked at the Hokage expectantly. Do you hate Konoha for everything you've been through? Naruto made a contemplative pose, putting his hand on his chin before replying. No, but I don't hate Konoha, but I maybe hate the villagers. Sighing and taking a deep breath the blonde continued after what you said to me earlier, I understand why they could fear me, but I didn't do anything to make their assumptions true. Naruto since you were young you claimed you wanted to be Hokage, is this still something you still want? Honestly I think it's not even possible for me to become Hokage anymore, I'd never get the villager support, you told me earlier that the big clans don't hate me, but I don't think that it's possible for me to be elected for Hokage without the civilians backing right. If I died without stating who I wanted to succeed me, yes. But if I decided to back down from the post and with some backing, it would still be possible to select someone without the civilian support, as long as I have the shinobi council backing. I see, but answering your question whilst being Hokage still has a shine for me, I don't feel like setting this as a goal anymore. Anymore. So you have a new goal. Here is an ask looking at Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Sort of. Now I'd like to become stronger so I can protect you, old man Tuchi and A.M. Nichin. Bracing a smile Hiruzen complimented the blonde a noble goal indeed. The duo kept eating in silence, as Hiruzen finished his pork ramen, Naruto was already on his way to his seventh bowl of the day. Fearing for Konoha's economic situation due to the massive drain caused by Naruto and his ramen addiction, Saratobi decided to speak again. Naruto, what we're going to do about the academy? You want me to talk with the teachers? Saratobi asked, stressing the talk word. Naruto, while still acted dumb, knew this talk would be very painful for the instructor. Even though he wanted to see those dumbasses put in their places, Naruto dismissed the idea. I see Saratobi mused after Naruto's dismissal of his idea. You're willing to let them go freely after what they did to you. The Hokage asked raising an eyebrow. I never said that, I guess some hard pranking is in order, and you're going to help me. Naruto replied with some real hardcore grin that sent some shivers down Saratobi's spine. Okami, I think I've created a monster. Chapter 2. Fox vs. Tiger. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto. Time was running low, four on his left, another four on his right, two towering from above. Naruto had to act quickly. Drawing four shurikens from his weapon pouch, Naruto hit the two targets on the left, one on the right and one above. Time was a factor. Time to get extra flashy. Jumping backwards in a black flip motion, Naruto withdrew two kunais from his holster strapped on his right leg, hitting the final target above and another one on his right. Before reaching the ground Naruto fired two shurikens up front, without any clear target, whereas the remaining target stood on the edge of his peripheral vision. Pulling a wire with his left pinky finger, altering the trajectory of one of the weapons, so it would head right. Then, jerking his head left, Naruto revealed another wire, this one pulled by his teeth, this wire, attached to the other shuriken, changed the projectile path to the right. In his final movement before landing on the ground, Naruto controlled the pinky shuriken to collide with the teeth shuriken, as the weapons collided, Naruto let go of the wires, effectively sending a shuriken towards his left, whilst the other one headed towards his right. Gracefully landing on his feet, Naruto contemplated his work. Ten targets, ten perfect shots. Very good, Naruto. Ten out of ten. Came the voice of Iruki Yamino. Standing with 5'8", with olive skin, black eyes and brown hair styled in a ponytail, his most distinguishing feature being the scar that crossed his nose bridge. This man was one of the precious people Naruto gained in the last four years. Naruto and Aruka had a rough start, as the Jinch Kriki often pranked the instructor. However after his talk with the Sandame four years ago, Naruto came to realize that he and Aruka were very alike, they were both orphans and craved attention. One day after class ended, Aruka asked to talk with Naruto. That was the day he gained an older brother. Flashback start. Three months after his talk with the Hokage, Naruto found himself in another extremely boring lecture from Aruka. He was sleeping alongside Chouji Akamichi and Shikamarinara, as he didn't saw any point in paying attention to this class. After some time Aruka noticed the slacking trio and went to scold them about paying attention to the lectures. Chouji and Shikamaru didn't seem bothered by Aruka's scolding, but Naruto was extremely angry because in the past he in fact paid attention to the class, but never learned anything due to the instructors constantly sabotaging his progress. Naruto decided that payback was in order. Instead of pranking, he decided to show Aruka and everyone in class that he didn't needed them. So, during the day Naruto would constantly answer all the questions Aruka posed to the class, during Tejutsu Spade blonde-haired boy made short work of every opponent, including Kiba Inuzuka, owner of one of the best Tejutsu grades in the class, before surrendering against Sakura under the reasoning of being tired, a blatant lie. As Naruto kept answering all the questions and beating every opponent, he would constantly glare at Aruka and Mizuki, as if saying that he didn't need their help. 
whilst both Mizuki, the most stuck-up student of the class, namely one Sasuke Chiha, and by extension the rest of the class, thought Naruto was cheating, Haruka was pleasantly surprised. He always came out as a rigid teacher, but unlike the other academy instructors he never despised Naruto because of the Kayubi, he saw Naruto as a normal kid, like the rest of the village should. The only reason Aruka kept a stern, non-friendly facade was because he saw much of his younger self in Naruto and therefore wanted to make sure that the boy didn't make the same mistakes as him. After class ended, Naruto was asked to stay and talk with Aruka. The teacher handed him a paper with a math problem. Naruto, if you answer this problem right, I will never bother you during class again. Reading the problem, Naruto saw that it in fact was a hard question, but not an impossible one by any means. So after 15 minutes, Naruto handed Aruka the paper back with his answer. Aruka knew that Naruto was holding back in classes, a fact that went unnoticed by the rest of the academy staff and even the students, so he purposefully gave Naruto a genin graduation test question. Knowing that Naruto never paid attention to the classes he knew he wouldn't suspect anything. As he saw the question, he knew that if Naruto wanted he could easily be top 3 in class, but he didn't want this because of something. Very good, Naruto as the said boy then turned back and made his way towards the door, Haruka said something that definitively got his attention, what about going to the Chirakus? My treat. Flashback end. After this, Naruto and Haruka became extremely close. Naruto never became top 3 in class, staying in the middle of the pack, but only because he didn't want it. Haruka managed to gain the boy trust and they became brothers in all but blood. Aruka learned about Naruto's rough start at the academy and saw that the slacker Naruto only existed because said boy didn't want any of the instructors to claim that they helped him achieve anything. As Naruto's respect to Aruka grew, he even started paying attention to Aruka's lectures, leaving the sleeping to the other teacher's classes. Now Naruto, all you need to do to pass the exam is to perform a henge, a kawarimi and a bunshin. The boy nodded before performing a kawarimi, substituting himself with a practice doll. Excellent, now a henge. Performing the seals, Naruto transformed himself into Anko Midarashi, the snake mistress of Konoha, wearing a more revealing than the usual outfit if that was possible, basically an almost naked Anko, only with some extremely small pieces of fabric covering their most private areas. The effect was instant, Haruka went from a serious academy teacher to a pervert in 0.003 milliseconds, being propelled backwards by a giant nosebleed before losing conscience upon hitting a wall. Fifteen minutes later Haruka regained consciousness. Bibaka, what was that about? Ha, ah, I always knew you were a closet pervert, this is my sexy no jutsu. What king of ninja does something like that? Haruka said, before bonking Naruto in the head. Someday this will defeat even the Hokage, Dadabeo. Naruto replied, causing Haruka to sweat drop. Anyway, now you need to do a bunshin so you could pass. In the exterior Naruto was looking calm and collected, but deep inside he was freaking out. The bunshin no jutsu was always his weakest technique because of his abnormal chakra pool. I need to do this, I can't fail Konohamaru and Abisu Hentai. Flashback start. After his payback at the academy teachers in an elaborate prank that consisted on having Anko Midarashi to invite the before-mentioned teachers to a four-way date with the Ice Queens of Konoha, paint, slingshot hits at very sensible places and horse weight laxatives, Naruto was back into the Hokage office. Yo, wanted to see me Jiji. Yes, we need to talk what we are going to do about your studies. I've been thinking on firing them or at least giving them an ultimatum about their responsibilities as teachers. Should they don't comply with my orders I pan on firing them and stripping their shinobi ranks. Thanks Jiji, knowing you care for me like this means a lot to me, but Naruto replied, adopting a more cautious tone I don't think it'll work. Seeing the Sandame's questioning expression, the blonde continued. The teachers hate me, but they are good at what they do, all I need to prove myself is to know that they aren't sabotaging me. Also if you fire them it'll take some time to find replacements and it'll prejudice the rest of the students. Eight years old and already putting the other's needs before his own. I see then here is in light up a grin he only displayed when he managed to outmaneuver Danzo, the elders and the civilians during council meeting. Then I have an idea. You'll have full access to the Saratobi compound library, as well as the Hokage estate library, use it to find reliable information concerning your studies. Naruto frowned a bit, whilst he was the hardworking type of guy, he disliked reading, but he couldn't let his hokage down. He was interrupted of his thoughts when he heard the slight tired, yet firm voice of the hokage. But we still need to make up for your lost time and your skills training. Satoko, his secretary, please summon Ibisu here. Flashback end. Ibisu was a Takubetsu jonin specialized in training, he like mostly of the village despised Naruto, but being picked by the hokage, he saw in this assignment the perfect opportunity to prove his worth to the hokage. Naruto trained under him for three years, two and a half of those years were purely focused on chakra control, which Ibisu defined as. 
backbone of all good shinobi. With the half of the year left, Ibisu taught Naruto in basic nature transformation. Whilst Naruto was ecstatic that he possessed a wind nature affinity that favored him during combat, he was saddened by the fact that nobody in Kanoha was able to use it, which made learning it impossible. Hiruzen informed that his son, Asuma, was a wind type user, but he left six years ago to join the 12 guardian ninja of the daimyo of the Land of Fire and was yet to return to Kanoha. Ibisu then decided to train Naruto in fire release nature transformation. Due to his affinity with fire being extremely higher, mainly because of the Kyuubi's chakra and his now high chakra control, Naruto was able to learn 3 c rank Katen Jutsu. Katen. Endan Fire, Release. Flame Bullet, Katen. Nkakak no Jutsu, Fire Release. Great Fireball Technique, and Katen. Usenka no Jutsu, Fire Release. Phoenix Age Fire Technique. His skill level in fire release jutsu was already at low chunin level when compared to Sasuke Uchiha, the last Uchiha, as the civilian said in awe, or the emo avenger and duckbit hair as Naruto and Kiba referred to him, Naruto was at the same level, if not above him. Ibisu's hard work with Naruto also paid profit to the teacher that was hired by Hiruzen as a tutor to his grandchild, Konohamaru. As a final gift, Ibisu gave Naruto a scroll with the katen. Correctin, fire release. Fire Dragon Bullet, a B-rank jutsu that Naruto was yet to perfect and declared that he was proud to be able to teach him. After these three years Naruto's opinion of Ibisu highly changed, putting the teacher onto his precious people list. As he was taught by Ibisu and was constantly around the Hokage Tower, Naruto was able to befriend Konohamaru Sirotobi, the grandson of the Sandame. Despite Konohamaru's bratish attitude, Naruto took a liking to the boy, considering him as a younger brother of sorts. Naruto was the first one to recognize Konohamaru as something other than the honorable grandson and would during free time help Ibisu with his training. He also lectured the boy about the hard work needed to him become the Hokage, stating that there were no shortcuts to becoming Hokage. Naruto are you okay? Came the concerned voice of Iruka. Yeah, why? Well, you were spacing out staring at the empty for 10 minutes. Sorry, was having a flashback moment. Naruto replied rubbing the back of his neck. I'm still waiting for the Bunshin. Roger that. Clearing his mind, Naruto made the required hand signs, summoning five bunshins. Iruka looked at the clones before smiling to the boy. Close your eyes. Why? Just close it. Okay. When he opened his eyes again, he found Iruka without his hit I ate, touching his own forehead he felt the steel and the Kanoha leaf symbol, before realizing. Congratulations on graduating Naruto, you're now a shinobi of Kanahagakur no Sado. Tears welled up in Naruto's eyes as he remembered of all his struggles during his lifetime, now he finally did it. Thanks, Iruka-sensei. The duo was then interrupted when a purple-haired Anbu woman, wearing a cat mask appeared before them. Iruka Yamino, Naruto Uzumaki, your presence is requested by the Hokage. Congratulations on graduating Naruto, you truly deserved it. The Hokage said, with a hint of pride of his surrogate grandson achievement. Thanks Hokage-sama, it means a lot to me. During his four years of studies, Naruto was able to read a book or two about etiquette, realizing that his effective way to refer to the Hokage was somewhat disrespectful, he decided to use the proper honorifics while at public. He never stopped seeing the Hokage as a grandfather figure, but decided that he could change his attitude to be a bit more professional. Still, in private he always called him his Jiji. Well, you're all business then. Now, do you have any idea why I called you here so promptly? No, but I assume it has something to do about me taking the graduation exams a day before the class. Yes, in fact it has. As Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato I assign you a B-rank mission. B-rank. Weren't those supposed to be taken only by Chunin or above? Not that I'm refusing the mission though. In fact, usually during peace only Chunin or above are allowed to complete B-ranks, however this mission in particular requires you to undertake it. There were some reports of an enemy spy working inside the academy, I suspect about some few teachers, but I can't take any actions yet. Yesterday we've received a report that this spy is plotting to steal the scroll of seals that contains Kenjutsu and was sealed by the Shadame Hokage himself. We suspect that the spy will probably attempt to enlist one the help of one of the students that failed the test. Considering your stealth prowess and background we believe that if you somehow fail the exam, you'll be the prime option of the spy. So, I need to fail the exam, but I'm still a genin right? Yes, the reason you graduated a day earlier in secrecy was that you could finally be assigned this mission. I assure you that even if you fail you'll still be placed on a genin team. I don't plan on failing though. Naruto replied with a smirk. And I don't think you will. The Hokage said, also smirking. Naruto, even as a genin was one of his most trusted shinobi, in fact he planned on revealing the truth of his parentage as soon as Jiraiya set his foot on Konoha. So, what are my orders? You'll botch your own graduation test to be approached by the spy. 
after that you use a decoy scroll and inform the Anbu about your meeting point. Like I said earlier, this is a B rank like I said earlier, considering there'll probably be a fight and you'll likely be targeted by the enemy. Thus you'll also will be required to assist the Anbu in the spy capture should they require, but I don't think they will. After that come to my office, I'll give you a graduation present. Things were going as planned for Naruto, he decided to purposefully arrive five hours late to the exam. Somewhere a silver-haired cyclops, reading an orange smut book sneezed. I have a feeling that finally someone decided to follow my way of life. This was of course planned, as he didn't want to raise any kind of suspicion amongst the graduates. He was approached by the spy, who turned out to be Mizuki, as planned. After retrieving the decoy scroll at the Hokage's office, he meet with the Anbu assigned to the capture of Mizuki, the purple-haired girl with the cat mask of yesterday, who introduced herself as Niko. The plan was simple, after Naruto handed the scroll to Mizuki, Niko would neutralize him. Should she was unable to instantly restrain him, Naruto would act as support, not engaging Mizuki directly. Naruto was sitting at the rendezvous point, the clearing of a forest outside of Konoha waiting for Mizuki. He made sure to observe all the surroundings, to be able to plan something should Niko's plan went wrong. After waiting for five minutes Mizuki finally showed up. Standing atop of a tree branch, whilst Naruto sat at the ground, under another tree. Hey Mizuki-sensei, I got the scroll, can I get my headband now? Naruto asked, pretending to be enthusiastic. Sorry, but no. Mizuki said with an evil glare now, die. He said throwing a few shuriken towards Naruto. Naruto quickly rolled towards his right, avoiding the lethal strike, just in time to see Niko leaping from a higher branch, using her sword to strike down Mizuki, who barely managed to avoid a hit. You okay kid? Niko asked. Yeah, now let's capture the team. No, I'll capture him, you'll stand down, I don't want to risk you by putting you head to head against a Chunin. If someone said that to Naruto four years ago, he would stubbornly refuse to stand down. However after four years of studying and in his first mission as a genin, Naruto followed suit, hoping to accomplish the mission, impress his superior, and hopefully get another B-ranked mission. While not engaging in combat Naruto was observing the fight carefully, trying to get the most intel as possible on the enemy. It was clear that Niko was more skilled than Mizuki, she used her kenjutsu to put Mizuki on a defensive stance. Mizuki instead was adept at shuriken jutsu as Naruto noted, due to the few shuriken he carried attached to his back and the large number of regular shuriken he carried in his weapon pouch. Being a long-range fighter, he was constantly attempting to get distance with Niko. Naruto also noted that Fuma Shuriken could also be used as a bladed weapon on his folded state, while not versatile enough, it provided a good defense against Niko's katana. Naruto hated Mizuki, but he must recognize his intelligence in the use of the Fuma Shuriken, as it gave him the much-needed defense against short-range fighters like Niko. Mikazuki no Mai, Dance of the Crescent Moon. Niko leapt forward, creating afterimages of speed, thus making the impression that she was attacking Mizuki from above and both his sides. Mizuki used his folded Fuma Shuriken to block the strike from above, and in a slicing motion, he managed to also block the strike from his left. Using his spare hand he managed to block the right strike. Using his blade to block two attacks from different directions at once, impressive. Naruto thought. He was brought out of his musings as Niko appeared in front of Mizuki, who now had his guard opened, and an impressive display of speed, thrusting her katana towards Mizuki's chest in a jabbing motion. As Naruto and Niko thought the fight was over, Mizuki seconds before being hit, channeled chakra into a tiger tattoo on his chest, making it glow from under his chunin vest. The next second, Mizuki's muscles underwent an impressive growth, ripping his shirt. The most bizarre thing is that he started growing a fur above his waist, becoming a hybrid of human and a tiger. The fur covered his entire torso, neck and face. Whilst maintaining his pale blue hair, he developed tiger ears. The unique areas that didn't spotted muscular growth were his legs. Niko managed to piece him with her katana, but the large muscle mass prevented any real damage and created resistance, making Niko unable to withdraw her sword from the enemy's chest. What the hell? Was the collective thought of Naruto and Niko. Now I'm going to kill both of you. Mizuki yelled in an animalistic roar. Drawing the sword from his chest and throwing it aside. From this point ahead the fight changed tides quickly. Mizuki became a close-range fighter, and Niko, who couldn't retrieve her katana in time, went on the defensive, avoiding Mizuki's strikes. The game of cat and mouse lasted for about five minutes. Naruto stood sideways watching the fight development, it was clear that Niko wouldn't be able to handle the onslaught for much longer. As in a clue, Mizuki launched a punch as Niko leapt backwards in order to avoid the strike, but Mizuki used his other arm to land a hit on the Anbu, on her left leg. Judging by the cracking sound, it was clear that Niko's leg was broken, effectively taking her out of the fight. Now Naruto had a choice. 
by observing Mizuki's behavior, it was clear that this transformation tired him. His reactions weren't sharp as they were in the beginning. Now he could retreat taking Miko, but risking a failed mission, as Mizuki would have more than enough time to retreat. Or he could fight. Hopefully lasting longer enough to get reinforcements, but risking both his and Miko's lives. Also failing his first mission, even if it's a beer rank would be bad for his record and could in the future get in his way when getting missions. Naruto shivered for a second thinking of the infamous D-rank missions he would have to complete to get in the Hokage's good graces again. Also allowing a spy to leave Konoha with extensive information would be, quoting Shikamaru, troublesome. As stated before, there were two choices. Stay and fight, risking his partner life, or flee, saving Nico, but giving the spy who possessed intel on the village to leave. Fortunately Naruto was known for thinking outside the box and came with a third plan. Leaping onto action he fired a supercharged Katen. Nkakak no Jutsu towards Mizuki, who surprised by Naruto's prowess in the Katen, stood dumbfounded, getting hit by the Jutsu. His muscular frame and fur shielded him from any fatal damage, but it still hurts like hell. Roaring he looked around and saw that both Naruto and Nico were gone. Naruto used the Jutsu as distraction so he could retrieve Nico. He rested her under the trunk of a tree, using the shadows in the forest to hide her. Then he made his way towards Mizuki, much to the Anbu agent protests. Mizuki was retreating towards the border with the rice country, where he was supposed to meet with his master. However he stopped in his tracks when he heard the voice of the guy he hated the most. Where do you think you're going? Naruto the traitor growled. Adopting a serious tone Naruto glanced towards Mizuki before speaking again. Before we start I'd to say a thing and then make you a question. I wanted to say that you're an amazing teacher, and I, as the Kyubi really shouldn't be allowed to learn alongside geniuses like Sasuke Chiha, still under different circumstances, I'd be delighted to learn under you. Seeing Mizuki's amused expression Naruto knew that if he couldn't make it as a ninja, he really should get a try on the acting career. Damn, I'm a good actor. I might even be able to star alongside Yuki Fujikas in one of those Princess Gale movies. Now for the question. Naruto said adopting an even more serious tone the tiger is your father or your mother. What? Mizuki asked taken back by the blonde's question. What I'm asking is Naruto said using hand gestures to emphasize his point a tiger fucked your mother or your father fucked a tigress. The forest was silent for five seconds that you could even hear the breathing of the various beings that inhabited the forest as Mizuki looked towards Naruto. Obviously the silence was bound to end soon. I'll kill you demon brat. I'll gut you alive. Mizuki said leaping towards Naruto, starting the hunt. Naruto, due to his background as a prankster and his training under Ibisu, was able to escape Mizuki with relative ease. For the next 30 minutes, using stealth, his fire jutsu and some weapons alongside some explosive tags and flashbangs, Naruto outmaneuvered Mizuki, hopefully buying Miko's time to escape and tiring Mizuki out. As he dashed between the trees, he noticed a shiny object on the ground. Miko's katana. Why not? He asked himself picking up a sword from the ground. The katana was single-edged and had a red and brown hilt with some gold and yellow details on the handle. Five minutes later, he faced a panting Mizuki in a clearing nearby where he left Niko. Even my strongest fire jutsu wasn't able to cause him any damage because of his fur and muscles. However, if things were going as planned reinforcements should be coming soon. Still I need to fight him right now so he wouldn't suspect anything. It's a good thing I picked that katana up. Naruto formulated a strategy that consisted on dodging Mizuki's strikes whilst using the katana to prevent him from getting much closer. After re-evaluating his opponent, Naruto decided it was safe to adopt a more offensive instance. Whilst never receiving any kind of training in kinjutsu, Naruto was a kinesthetic learner, and during his brief spar with Mizuki, he was able to learn the basics of the katana. The fact that he was genuinely interested in learning kinjutsu in the future was another plus. Unknown to him Niko didn't retreat it, she refused to leave a genin alone to fight a chunin. Unfortunately Mizuki's punch broke her calf, so she was in no condition of fighting, but should Naruto fall, she would be able to hold him long enough for him to retreat. She looked at the blonde boy holding her katana and frowned, academy students weren't taught kinjutsu in Konoha, as opposed to villages like Kiri and Kumo, so obviously the boy shouldn't be able to wield the sword properly. Noticing his grip she realized that the boy didn't use the Kanoha Kinjutsu stance, but he appeared to be comfortable enough. As the fight progressed she was pleased to see that Naruto wasn't the hot-headed idiot type who leapt forwards without thinking. He properly took his time and used the katana as a defensive weapon to prevent the enemy to close distance. Interesting use of an offensive weapon to create defense, the boy is intelligent. Niko frowned as she saw the boy adopting a more offensive instance and hoped he wasn't getting overconfident. During the next five minutes Nico's already growing opinion of the boy increased even more as he was able to keep attacking, tiring the opponent out and not allowing him any kind of chance to counter-attack. 
Naruto kept attacking and tiring out Mizuki, he even managed to get a few cuts on his legs and torso, but mostly importantly he stalled the enemy. Why he did that? To get reinforcements, of course. How he knew there were reinforcements coming. It was his plan all along. As he dodged another furious strike of Mizuki, who was on his last legs, he felt two chakra signatures approaching. Whilst not receiving training in censoring, Naruto had a natural talent for this particular ability. When younger he sensed people by his Kyubi improved hearing, nowadays he was able to sense chakra signatures meditating, but being focused on the fight, he still was able to sense someone coming, but he didn't knew their strength. The reinforcements were in fact Anbu, who using a restraining technique quickly subdued Mizuki, getting him unconscious. At the same time Miko appeared. She was there all this time? I really need to pick up my sensing abilities. Her Anbu mask prevented her from showing any emotions, but if Naruto could guess, he would say it was anger, as he expressly refused to follow one of her direct orders, engaging the enemy. The mission was successful, but he refused to follow orders anyway. He just hoped he could still get at least C rank missions after that. He refused to follow my orders. Yes, I did, I'm sorry about that, but we couldn't allow the spy to flee with important information on our village. Still, you didn't follow my orders. Niko-san, I'm sorry, I made a decision on the spot thinking on the best of the village, whilst trying to prevent any unnecessary causalities. Still, I know I broke the rules and I know there'll be consequences. No there won't be any consequences. Niko said coldly, flaring killing intent and Naruto somehow felt his shinobi career was in danger. However suddenly the Kai vanished and judging by Niko's body language, she was happy. I also made several mistakes on this mission. I presumed you were just a bratty academy student and never bothered to learn about your techniques, thus being unable on developing any good strategy, should the enemy resist. I over-relied on my kinjutsu, which made an opening that allowed the opponent to attack me, jeopardizing the mission. Also I never really scouted the area, assuming it would be a simple snack and grab mission, unlike you who used the environment in your favor. If someone should be apologizing it would be me. So I'm not in trouble. In contrary, I believe the Hokage will be pleasantly surprised with your performance today. Noticing that he still held the katana on his right hand, he bowed and offered the katana to Niko, holding the hilt and the edge of the sword with open hands. Naruto remembered that katana were usually wielded by samurai, and he read that this was the manner they handled their weapons. I believe this is yours Niko-san. Taken back by the young boy knowledge of the Bushido, she bowed accepting her sword. You've put quite a display fighting Mizuki, I didn't knew that the academy started teaching kinjutsu again, even though I don't recognize this style as being the Kanoha kinjutsu. It's because it wasn't. The academy doesn't offer any kinjutsu training. I tried to wield the katana with the best of my abilities, even though I never received any formal education in kinjutsu, I just hope my display wasn't an eyesore for a practiced kinjutsu user like you. Wait you're saying you never properly trained kinjutsu? How is that possible? I'm what people call a kinesthetic learner. It came to me pretty easily actually. Naruto said shrugging. But I believe that my interest in kinjutsu helped me as well. Niko was dumbfounded, this kid could put up a fight, wielding a weapon he didn't had any familiarity with, and was able to create his own style, even with some noticeable flaws. In 35 minutes. I have to tell Hei Kun about this kid, he was looking for an apprentice for years. Naruto-san came the voice of one of the other Anbu operatives, who wore an ox mask, the Hokage requested your presence in his office ASAP. Go, we'll take care of Niko-senpai and the traitor. Hiruzen was slightly preoccupied, he was able to use the crystal ball to see the mission progress, and promptly sent Anbu to help Naruto and Niko during the mission. Mizuki had this strange transformation that he suspected it was work of Orochimaru. If that was indeed true it meant that things would get even more complicated. However what concerned the most was that he wasn't able to witness the rest of the fight. The Tmege no Jutsu telescope technique had a time limit that ticked down just as Naruto questioned the paternity of Mizuki. His fears however were put to the ground as the door to his office opened, revealing Naruto. Mission accomplished Hokage-sama. The lone figure reached the gates of Konoha after seven years. Seven years ago he made a life-changing decision leaving his home. For seven years he questioned his decision, thinking of what could have been. In seven years he attained glory and became a proven shinobi, but deep inside he felt empty, because in leaving he hurt the person who he loved most in the world. She still remembered him. She hated him for what he did. She was dating someone. Yes, yes and no, his, um, informant kept him updated. The tall man wore a black coat, with brown details, with black pants and clack shinobi boots. He carried himself with an air of confidence, but deep in his eyes you could see regret. A cloak covered his head, making his features unrecognized. Upon reaching the gate he glanced at the two figures performing duty. Kitetsu Hagein and Azumo Kamizuki, the eternal chunins of the guard duty. 
He waved to them, before removing his cloak, making his face visible. Izumo and Kitetsu were in another boring day at guard duty, their day however became more eventful as they noticed the approaching figure removing his cloak. It is really him. I has been a long time since he left. It is he. Things will become a lot more interesting from now on. Chapter 3. Team 10. Author's Note. Chapter 3 here, I'm quite happy with the progress of the story, this chapter was actually fun to write, I've really enjoyed writing the few humor moments, I just hope I haven't overdid it. About a pairing question I've received. Ino will be in the harem, Narino is one of my favorite pairings. I'm not sure about Hinata, I actually tried to develop here having a more sister-like relationship with Naruto. So, maybe, but if there's Naruhina it'll be around the Shippuden timeline. Like I said it'll be a small harem, I'm wanting to have 5 or 6 girls at max. I've already decided about 3 of them, so I'm still open to suggestions. I plan on making the Asuma Kurinai relationship different from canon as you can see, but I assure you that if I finish this story they'll definitively end together. So, I hope you have as much fun reading this chapter as I had writing it. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto. So, you decided that it was a good idea to engage a Chunin level shinobi, who managed to defeat one of my best Anbu operatives, just one day after you graduated from the academy. Yup. Even when this Chunin probably used a Kinjutsu to enhance his physical abilities. Yup. Damn it Naruto could you please stop replying every question I have with a yup. Yup wait no. This isn't a joke, have things played differently, and the Anbu haven't arrived a time you could have died. Here is in ranted, in the verge of yelling. Well, I knew they would be coming. Naruto replied with a grin. Stop messing around, I'm being serious. So am I seeing the Hokage's doubts about his previous statement, Naruto elaborated. Remember when I fired the first fireball to distract Mizuki and save Nico? Getting a nod from the Hokage, the genin continued, I supercharged that attack with half of my chakra, so the Anbu stationed in the village perimeter could easily sense the attack and head towards our direction. I never planned on taking Mizuki down, I just kept stalling him to give the Anbu enough time to reach the scene. Hiruzen was dumbfounded, Naruto having just left the academy already developed a Chunin-like line of though. However he wasn't totally convinced yet. You knew the scroll was a decoy one, so why risk getting into a fight? Perhaps you were trying to show service to get more high-ranked missions. I'll be honest and say that in fact this went through my mind, however it was far from being the reason I enacted a new plan, instead of withdrawing and risking losing Mizuki. Using his hand to enumerate his points, he continued. Reason number one. Letting a spy flee the village is always bad for the image of the village and could in the future translate into more hostile spy actions. Reason number two. Mizuki was the academy teacher of a class full of clan heirs, including the famed Hayuga and the Ichiha clans, considering our village relies a lot on its clans, I assumed that by stopping him, I could prevent sensitive information from getting into the hands of the enemies. Third reason. Since he was captured alive the T&I department can get information of his reasonings and hopefully his employer. Fourth reason. I hate Mizuki. Hiruzen now had to fight the urge to promote Naruto to Chunin at the spot. The kid embodied the will of fire, putting the village security and his comrades ahead of his own life. He was still reckless, but this kind of attitude demanded encouragement, not reprimands. Well, I'm speechless. Not only you completed a mission that turned out to be a air rank, since it concerned secretive village affairs, but also managed to analyze the scenario you were in, decide the best plan of action, and develop and perform a successful strategy at the spot. Thanks Hokage-sama, being praised by you means a lot to me. No need to formalities now, we're alone. Picking an envelope on his drawer and handling it to Naruto, he continued his speech. This is the reward for your first mission, like I stated earlier due to the capture of an enemy and the facts I mentioned before, it turned out to be a rank. Opening the envelope, Naruto heart skipped a bit. 150,000 rim. And? I am using the conversion rate that $1 is equivalent to 10 rim, so Naruto received about $15,000 for this mission. Seeing the gen and eyes shine with the amount of money, Hiruzen chuckled. Don't go spending all your money on Raymond. Also, remember to go to the academy next week for the gen and team's assignments. Until then you're dismissed. As soon as Naruto left his office, Hiruzen reached for his hidden drawer, where his faithful companion in the battle against the paperwork rested. Time for some reading the Sandame said to himself, giggling perversely. His quality time was quickly interrupted when Anbu appeared in the room. Okajama, Asuma Siratobi has returned to the village. What here is in though would be a quiet uneventful night, quickly snowballed into a sleepless night for the aged Hokage. First Naruto managed to complete his air rank, capturing a spy that could be working for Orochimaru. Then his son, Asuma, came back to Konoha and is requesting an audience with him about being reintegrated into the shinobi program. 
also he had to create the genin teams of a graduating class full of clan heirs, what was never an easy task, considering both the civilian and the shinobi councils tended to butt in, the latter one being in a most considerate less demanding manner. Finally Nico, one of his most trusted anbu, asked to a private audience with him alongside her boyfriend, hey, why? He had no idea. But before worrying about Nico, he had to meet his son. Asuma and Hiruzen never really agreed about anything, Hiruzen knew that his younger son never wanted to be seen just as the Hokage's son. Hiruzen's wife, Boako, was the peacemaker, both men were extremely strong, but they were smart enough to learn to never get on the bad side of a woman. When Boako passed out, their relationship deteriorated badly, Asuma felt alone, and Hiruzen buried himself into his work as Hokage. Finally, on a fateful day seven years ago, Asuma had a serious discussion with his then-girlfriend, Kurunai Yuhi, and they ended breaking up. Alone, Asuma decided that he needed a change of air and decided to accept the daimyo offer to join the 12 Guardian Ninja. During those seven years they only exchanged letter thrice. When Konohimaru was born, when Asuma attained a bounty of 35 million rim and Hiruzen wrote to him, counseling some security measures and finally, when he decided that Kurunai should be promoted to Jonin and asked Asuma, in condition on being her ex-teammate. But now father and son stood in front of each other after all these years. Hiruzen noted that Gon was the teen that left years ago, now he was a man. Asuma was still relatively young, 27 years old, but carried himself with the air of a veteran, the Sandame's son was noticeably stronger than he left. One thing that remained the same was his smoking habits, usually parents tended to discourage those kinds of habits, but being a shinobi meant your life would be online each and every time, so dying at his mid-40s was already better than dying in his mid-twenties, like Minato and Taburama, two of the strongest shinobi Konoha had to offer, and that died nevertheless. So, you're back. Yes I am, father. Both men spoke in neutral, bearing emotionless tones, but even when they were on speaking terms they behaved like this. Asuma, unlike his elder brother and his nephew, never was the kind of people to let himself be overtaken by feelings. So sitting on an office, making small talk or playing shogi, was the way they had to connect. How was the capital? The father-son duo proceeded to make small talk for 30 minutes, with Hiruzen being careful to not mention Kurunai or children in any moment of the conversation. However, this meeting was bound to change pace quickly when Asuma noticed the stack of academy papers in his desk. They're building the teams, aren't those supposed to be built automatically? Usually yes, but this year has been particularly different. This graduating class has the heirs to the Akamichi, Aburam, Nara, Hayuga, Inuzuka and Yamanaka clans, a promising girl from the Haruno civilian clan, the last of the Ichiha and finally Naruto Uzumaki. That's why I don't want your job. Asuma said chuckling. Humph, this isn't even the worst part, the civilian council kept bothering me about assigning the Achiha to a one-man squad, so others wouldn't hinder his growth, the shinobi council keeps asking me about the sensei, and the jonin themselves keep asking for certain additions to their teams. Who are the jonin anyway? Shit. Well, you see Kakashi and Ershi. She? Asuma asked narrowing his eyes. Hey Kei Kerr. Kurunai? Asuma asked interrupting his stuttering father. Yes. Asuma just smiled. She's on the path of a fine Kanoichi. Yes, she's one of our best, the Jinjutsu mistress of Kanoha Hiruzen said, causing Asuma to smile even more. Returning to the team assignments topic, what were the requests? The civilian council alongside the elders wanted to Sasu Kachiha to be placed on an individual team under Kakashi, I promptly refused the one-man cell idea, but I'm assigning him to Kakashi, considering Kakashi himself asked for him. The shinobi council is worried about the jonin instructors getting on the way of their children's training, the Hayuga mainly. Kurunai decided to ask for an all-kanoichi team so she could beat the fangirl out of the Yamanaka and the Haruno whilst helping the Hayuga to develop confidence. Kakashi asked for both Sasuke and Naruto while Danzo requests him to be trained as a weapon and the civilian council requests his execution. Though break, do you have any team ready yet? Only the Inoshikacho. I already have Sasuke under Team Kakashi, but I don't want Naruto on his team. Why? Just because he's a Jinch Kriki. No, because right now he's the best genin I've had since Itachi Achiha. Saratobi explained causing Asuma's eyes to widen. If he's put on a team with the Achiha he'll probably beat Sasuke, what will cause some problems ahead pertaining the council. Also the council will pretty much demand Kakashi to focus on the Achiha, and even if that wasn't the case, Kakashi isn't the best suited teacher for Naruto. Why is that? Because Naruto uses wind affinity, the single one Kakashi wasn't able to master. The wind user? Like me? In Konoha. How is that possible? Asuma suddenly became a lot more interested in this year's class. How do you think affinities are gained? 
usually genetically, but besides me there was no other wind user other than the yon the Asuma eyes widened, he looked at his father, who just nodded, then he looked onto the yondane portrait that was hung in the wall, and cursed his stupidity for not realizing before. Well I guess that explains why Kakashi wanted him. Yes, but I know Kakashi isn't the best teacher for him. If I assign him to Team Kakashi, I fear we'll be losing a cage level prospect to get a Jonin level 1. Is he that good? Yes, today he completed his first mission, an A ranked mission. He mainly uses fire release because of the lack of a wind release teacher in Konoha. He already has Jonin level chakra reserves, has Chunin level ninjutsu, and above average to jutsu, and compensates his lack of talent in jinjutsu through complex, yet effective strategies. His IQ is estimated in about 150, that whilst not Nara high, is high nonetheless. The most impressive thing is his mindset, he always thinks of what is the best for the village, and is able to analyze the development of the fight on the run. Besides that he developed chakra sensing abilities. So, basically a hybrid of me, Kakashi, Shikaku Nara and Anoichi Yamanaka, with an almost endless chakra pool. Getting a nod from his father he just shrugged well, count me in. I heard that the jonin that trains the future cage of Konoha usually gets some good reputation. Asuma the Sandame said before grinning this is perfect, with you as a sensei I can balance the squads. Thank you, son. No problem, dad. Asuma said smiling. But I must inform you that Yugao Yuzuki, one of Kurinai's best friends is coming here right now, so I strongly advise you to flee if you don't want Kurinai to know you're back. Asuma's cool facade quickly changed into a terrified one. Yeah, that's my clue, see you later dad. Asuma said, jumping from the window. I don't know why, but my son reminded me of a certain someone. Somewhere in a hot spring in the land of the hot water, a toad sage doing his research sneezed, revealing his position, and ended up being beaten up by a horde of angry females. Naruto woke up with a sound of a knock on his door, walking around his small apartment, he quickly changed into a plain black t-shirt and a white cargo short combo, which he wore during the last four years at the academy. Looking at his hit I-80 became undecided whether he should wear it as a headband or as an armband. Thinking his hair usually tended to fall on his forehead, he decided to go for the headband. Opening the door, he saw in tiger mask Anbu male, wearing full Anbu apparel. Okajama asked you to go to his office right now. The Anbu said, before disappearing in a shunshin. Gotta learn how to do that. After walking to the Hokage tower, he entered the office, where he was received by the Hokage and two other persons. A purple-haired girl with straight waist-length hair with brown eyes and pale face, and a man with a tired aspect, evidenced by the bags under his eyes, with fair skin and short brown hair. The couple wore standard Kanoha flak jacket, the uniform for Chunin rank or above Shinobi. The noticeable fact is that the two of them had katanas, a rare sight in Kanoha, where Kenjutsu wasn't taught, unlike other villages like Kumo, Kiri and even Iwa by lesser extent. Hello, Hokage-sama, Niko-san, Niko's boyfriend-san. Wait, how do you knew who I was, I never showed my face, and how do you know that Hate kun was my boyfriend? Answering your first question. The katana you have strapped on your back is similar to the one you used yesterday, the handle seemed custom made, what eliminates the possibility of it being mass produced, and I kinda sensed your chakra signature. Wow, I didn't know you were a sensor too, but how did you discover that Hate kun was my boyfriend? You were holding hands. Quickly detaching their hands, the couple looked to the hokage that was clearing his throat. Naruto, I called you here for two reasons, the first one is that I forgot to give you your graduation process. The Sandame said, taking a scroll from a drawer and handling it to Naruto. This scroll contains the cage bunch and no jutsu, a jutsu that was into the scroll that Mizuki intended to steal. This jutsu is labeled as a kinjutsu due to the high chakra usage, but considering your abnormal chakra reserves, I don't think you'll have any problems in using it effectively, here is an explained. Now, for the second topic. Naruto those behind you are Yuga Mizuki, whom you met as a Niko during last night, and her boyfriend, Hei Jakum, the best swordsman of Konoha. It came to Yugam's attention that you were quite skilled in Kenjutsu, even though you haven't received any formal instruction in that matter. Therefore, they are offering to teach you in the Konoha Rik Kenjutsu. What do you think? For real? He said turning to the couple, who smiled and nodded to him I'd love to. Off Okajama informed us that you were given a one-week rest until you're assigned to your genin team, so I'd like to teach you cough during the afternoons of this week. After that I'll assign a training program that will make you able to cough train alone. Cough after two months you'll have a spar with me and Yugam chan here. Hayate explained. Now let's get to work. Yugam completed. Two days before the genin team assignment. After another hellish training session under Yugam and Hayate, Naruto was making his way home. His kenjutsu improved greatly during training, but still was a work in progress. 
Bugum also was considerate enough to give Naruto some pointers in the usage of his sensory skills, but they were nowhere near effective, as Naruto could only sense signatures in a 500 meters radius and could only distinguish those signatures into a 100 meters radius. Considering even Genin were able to cut this 500 meters in less than one minute and he could only sense their chakra in less than 10 seconds before the attack, it would leave him defenseless, as he would only have this tiny time window to evaluate the opponent chakra and decide he would be able fight back or retreat. The couple decided to give Naruto tomorrow as a day off so he could rest for the big day. Naruto then decided to visit Ichiraku's to grab some ramen, he was too tired to even think of making his own meal. After he learned about the Kyubi and decided to put more effort in becoming a shinobi, Naruto, after some persuasion from Ibisu and the Hokage, decided to cut off ramen, adopting a more balanced diet. However ramen was still his personal favorite and he stopped by at the Ichiraku's at least once a week. After ordering two servings of miso ramen and another two of pork ramen, Naruto noticed that A.M., who was serving him since Tuchi already went home, was somewhat different. Hey A.M. Nichin, something troubling you? Naruto asked honestly concerned. No, everything's fine. A.M. responded, faking a smile. She could at least put some effort onto lying then. A.M., I consider you as my sister, to me you are family, so please tell me what's wrong. I may be able to help. Sorry Naruto, this is my problem, I don't want to bug you. A.M., whenever I had a bad day at the academy you were there to cheer me up, even if I can't help you, it'll be good to let it off. Okay, remember that I started going to go to cooking school to become a nutritionist. As Naruto nodded, expressing his attention, the girl continued well, we've been having some difficult months here, and not only I'll not be able to continue studying, but father might even close the restaurant. Okay, how much money do you need? Naruto, I'm talking about serious money here, you won't be able to afford to help, I appreciate your intentions, but it's time to let go. A.M. please, how much do you need to help the restaurant and complete your studies? 25,000 rim to school, 50,000 rim to restaurant, total. 75,000 rim. A.M. replied, sighing. No problem, I can afford that. Naruto replied nonchalantly, causing A.M. eyes to jump of their sockets. How did you get so much money? Please tell me you aren't selling drugs. What? No, I'm a shinobi. Naruto said proudly pointing to his headband. I completed a mission and received 150,000 rim. I don't mind paying to help you. Still, you need to talk to dad before we accept. Okay, about your studies I can loan you give you the money as a gift, I only want two things from you. Naruto, no matter how much you pay, I won't have sex with you. A.M. said narrowing her eyes. What? Naruto said blushing. You ask me to do two things for you, probably sex or a blowjob. The brunette replied, causing Naruto's blush to achieve a blood red tone and a small nose bleed to appear. Nuo I never said that, why everyone in Kanoha is a pervert. Heck, you're like my older sister, geez. Usually when a man offers money to a girl, asking for a favor he usually means sex. A.M. replied. Well, I'm not like most men. So you're one of those happy guys. A.M. interrupted Naruto. As the genin failed to understand the meaning of her words, she continued you know, a man who likes other men. No. You're confounding me with Sasuke team, I'm straight. Deciding to finish business before AM mentioned sex again, he continued. The two things I wanted to ask you are for you to help me with a diet for free and to go shopping with me tomorrow. Shopping? AM said, her eyes suddenly twinkling. Yes, I decided to change my style now that I'm a shinobi, I figured out I could use a girl opinion. Well, Naruto Yuzumaki you got yourself a deal. The assignment day. Naruto woke up late. Why? He learned in the hard way that when you get into a situation where girl and shopping exist in the same sentence, you must leave everything behind and run. Run like your life depended on it. Run like Orochimaru wanted to become butt buddies with you. Run like an Achiha when you see Tabarama. Run like an Iwa Shinobi when you see the yellow flash. Run like an Nara when you see work, just kidding, Naras don't run, it's too troublesome. Well you get the point. Naruto spent 12 hours with AM. What started to simple get together and go to Higurashi's weapons turned out to be a visit to the hairdresser, then a visit to several female clothing stores, then a visit to the Ichiraku's house to discuss how Naruto could help old man Tucci, and finally an expensive dinner at one of those overpriced restaurants. Should have asked Yugam san for help instead. Twelve hours later and 110,000 rim short Naruto couldn't help but feel drained. He was happy to reach an agreement with old man Tucci, he ended up buying 25% of the Raymond stand with his 100,000 rim, effectively making him a co-owner of the place. The other 10,000 rim were used buying clothes, weapons, getting a new haircut, buying AM a dress, he was still trying to figure out how she convinced him to do that, must have been the puppy eyes no jutsu, and paying for dinner. 
Naruto was happy with his choice of clothes, they were somewhat cool, but still durable and light, so he could move freely. He also replenished his weapon stock and placed an order for a custom-made katana that would be ready in a month time. Naruto considered his haircut somewhat cooler than his previous one, but still was practical, the main reason he opted to modify his hairstyle. Naruto now wore black shinobi sandals with metal toe cap, so his toes weren't exposed to attacks from projectiles like senbin or arrows. The sandal itself was made of a more resistant type of rubber than the one used in the standard issue, providing more durability. He wore black anbu pants, which tightened around his calves, but still were loose enough for him to move without losing any speed or momentum. On his right tight, a modified kunai holster to also hold shuriken was strapped with white bands. Naruto opted for this modified version so he could quick draw shuriken as well, even though there wouldn't be too many available. Since he never really was a fan of shuriken jutsu, he decided to go for effectiveness instead of sheer number. He wore a black simple jacket, which he maintained closed, with a single orange strip running from each shoulder to the end of the sleeves. He also emboldened the Yuzumaki clan insignia on the back of his shirt. Even being a full sleeve jacket, Naruto wore it with half-folded sleeve running until his mid-forearm. He decided to not buy an armor of kinds, since he usually preferred to engage the opponent's mid-range, and his tojutsu instances were heavily biased towards evasion, so speed was chosen in detriment of armoring. Underneath the jacket Naruto wore a mesh t-shirt, chosen to give some extra protection. Naruto's new hairstyle was a slightly shorter variation of his previous one, which he wore as a side-swept haircut. He decided for this option since the AM, and even himself by a lesser extent, considered to be kind of ugly. By side seeping it he could prevent his bangs from falling onto his eyes, even if somehow he lost his headband. Finally Naruto resolved his hit I8 dilemma by wearing it as a headband. This choice was that wearing it as a headband instead of an armband not only he could get a protection in his forehead, but also his arm's movement wouldn't be slightly restrained by the armband form. He changed the clothing from blue to black to be more undetectable at night. Quite happy with his new look, Naruto made his way towards the classroom, hoping to not be late. Upon entering the classroom, he realized that he wasn't late, but his new wardrobe attracted some people's attention. Choji Akimichi, Shikamaru Nara and Kiba Inuzuka, his closest friends, looked at him quizzically before stopping as Naruto gave them a we'll talk later look. Sasuke Chiha quickly glanced towards him, probably expecting to see Aruka, after he realized that it was just Naruto he went back to brood in his own world. However Sasuke action wasn't unnoticed by his closest two fangirls, Sakura Haruno and Ino Yamanaka. Both girls turned out to see the new Naruto, and both lightly blushed. Oh Kami, Naruto looks hot. The blonde fangirl though. Is that Naruto? He's handsome no perish this blasphemous thoughts, I like Sasuke, Sasuke, not Naruto. The pinket though. Ah. What a glorious piece of meat. Inner Sakura added. Finally on the corner of the room Hinata Hayuga was trying her hardest to not faint, but as Naruto made eye contact with her, those efforts went to waste as she passed out. Naruto wanted to seat near his friends, however there was just one available seat on the end of the class. Making his way towards the seat, Naruto was thankful that he went shopping, judging by the blushes of the girls in his class, it seemed that his new wardrobe caused quite the impression. Taking his seat Naruto realized that he could see the entire class from his spot. Toji, Kiba and Shikamaru were sitting together, the first one was eating, as usual, the second one was playing with Akamaru, as usual, and finally the last one was sleeping, yep nothing new as far he was concerned. Those three were his only friends with his age. Naruto and the trio became closer because of their lack of interest in classes. Each one had different reasons Naruto himself wanted to make clear that he didn't needed a teacher's help and that everything he achieved, he achieved on his own, the only exception going to Aruka's classes. Doji wasn't motivated, like his best buddy, Shikamaru, and spent most of the class eating. Kiba disliked indoor classes and tended to skip a lot of classes to play outside with Akamaru. Shikamaru had zero motivation, but over 200 in IQ, so he would take constant naps, play shogi instead of paying attention to the lectures, but still had no problems in the tests, actually Naruto was pretty sure that if Shikamaru wanted he could easily become the rookie of the year, but quoting Shikamaru himself, it was too much troublesome Naruto's closest friend was Shikamaru. They would slack off together and sometimes play shogi, with Shikamaru actually having to make an effort to win. After befriending Shikamaru, Choji came next, the boy was nice and a loyal friend, and naturally became Naruto's friend. Naruto's relationship with Kiba was a bit more complex, at the start Kiba didn't saw eye to eye with him, mainly because that when Naruto stopped being sabotaged by the teachers, he quickly surpassed him, making Kiba the dead last in class. However they would constantly skip class and occasionally pull pranks, Kiba stopped resenting Naruto for surpassing him and decided that his grades were his own fault. Naruto even helped Kiba with schoolwork once or twice. 
Due to their kinship with the dogs, the Inyazuka clan was considered one of the most loyal clans on Kanoha, and Naruto was happy to have such a loyal friend. On his right corner sat Shino Abiram, who was just Shino. He was the good kind of stoic. He treated well those who treated him well and never bothered anyone. But due to his reclusive nature, a shared trait amongst his clansmen, he never really talked with Naruto on a personal level. Naruto's attention quickly changed to the still passed out Hinata Hayuga, the heiress to the Hayuga, the strongest clan in Kanoha. The Hayuga were the traditionalist kind of clan, their division in main and branch houses being one of those so-called traditions. Hinata was unlike the rest of the Hayuga, which meant she didn't act like she had a five-foot pole shoved in her ass, actually she was kind and caring with everybody. Hinata's biggest weakness was his lack of confidence that made her look weak to her clan, that began to criticize her and therefore making her more unconfident. Naruto, after being forcibly retired by the sex ed class, decided to learn by studying the Icha Icha book series. If that was his most brilliant or his stupidest idea Naruto wasn't yet sure, but the fact is that by judging by her actions towards him, Naruto came to the obvious conclusion that Hinata had a big crush on him. Naruto was first overjoyed when he learned that a girl liked him that way, but after researching about the Hayuga, he saw that there were no prospects of a future relationship between him and Hinata. The Hayuga clan practiced some mild inbreeding to keep their bloodline clean, and there were some few documented cases of women being married off to another clans, much less this woman being the heir. Even though the prospects of a future relationship between Naruto and Hinata being almost inexistent, Naruto really cared about the heiress and hoped to help her with her confidence issues. Next was Ino Yamanaka, one of the prettiest girls in the class, nah, one of the prettiest girls in Kanoha. Naruto had a huge crush on her, but combining his newfound dedication towards shinobi training and Ino being one of Sasuke's most avid fangirls made him forcibly end his one-sided crush. Unlike most of the girls in class, Ino came from a shinobi clan, actually being heir to the Yamanaka, due to that she didn't openly despise Naruto like the girls from civilian origins. They weren't friends, but due to Naruto's closeness to Choji and Shikamaru, they were on speaking terms. The only thing Naruto disliked about Ino was her fangirl attitude about Sasuke that in his opinion hindered her growth. Deeply inside Naruto, despite his neutral attitude towards the blonde, cared a lot about her. Romantically speaking Naruto still had a bit of a crush on her, but he hid extremely well. Despite all those qualities the girl who Naruto had his biggest crush wasn't Ino, actually it was her rival friend. Sakura Haruno was Naruto's first crush, actually Naruto's first love. Unfortunately it was totally one-sided and Naruto never felt the right moment to make a move on her. After undergoing a change of personality four years ago, Naruto hoped that his crush on Sakura would end. Boy, he was wrong, before seeing the world with his newfound wisdom, Naruto liked Sakura because she was pretty, she had a lovely pink hair and a cute forehead. The new Naruto saw a girl that was extremely talented, with a masterful chakra control, and that managed to be the top Kanoichi in class, in front of two clan heiress despite her civilian handicap. Now Naruto was truly in love. But he knew better, she liked Sasuke, her crush on the emo being even bigger than Ino's. She was a civilian, her parents probably hating him. So Naruto decided to do what he did best, mask his feelings. During four years, Naruto never spoke a single word to Sakura, hoping to someday finally stopping loving her. He felt that his love turned back into attraction, but deep inside it was still there. Finally, Sasuke Chiha, Aka Duck Butt Hair, Aka the Emo Avenger, Aka Sasuke. The last Achiha. If all the Achihas acted like Sasuke, Naruto would pat Itachi on the back for getting rid of them. Sasuke had a superiority and inferiority complex at the same time. He looked down at all of those who he deemed as weaker than him, but at the same time, he refused to acknowledge anyone who was stronger than him as a equal. Naruto could never imagine what would be like having his entire clan wiped out by his brother, being the lone survivor. Naruto could understand the pain and the suffering from losing those close to him. What Naruto couldn't understand and would never accept that beside always being praised, noticed and sometimes even favored, the guy would continue living on his own world. Sasuke never knew what was like being forcibly alone, having no one to acknowledge you, and thus decided to just act high and might and ignore people who genuinely cared about him, like Ino and Sakura. That being said aside, Naruto respected the shinobi Sasuke, who could probably give Chunin's a run for their money. Naruto's thoughts were interrupted by Aruka's appearance. After long 30 minutes of speech, where Naruto decided to pull off a Shikamaru, sleeping off the speech. He woke up only to hear. Theme 7. Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno, Kiba and Yuzuka. Team Sensei is Kakashi Haddock. In the background Naruto could hear Kiba's complaints about being placed on the same team as the Achiha and Sakura's cries of happiness, much to Ino's dismay. Team 8. Shikamaru Nara, Choji Akimichi, Ino Yamanaka. Team Sensei is Kurana Yuhi. Naruto could hear more of Ino complaining about being in a team full of slackers. 
Team 9 is still active, so we jump to Team 10. Naruto Uzumaki, Shino Aburam, Hinata Hayuga. Team Sensei is Asuma Suratobi. At this moment, Hinata, who just had woken up, passed out again after being put on a team with Naruto. You must wait for the teachers on the classroom. Haruka said before leaving the room. Naruto spent the next 10 minutes talking to Kiba, as Ino forcibly dragged Joji and Shikamaru to put up some ground rules, he wanted to talk with his teammates, but Hinata was still passed out, and Shino didn't seem eager to any kind of social interaction. Finally the door opened revealing a tall olive-skinned man. He was smoking a cigarette had a beard and a spiky black hair. His outfit was the standard Kanoha attire, with addition of a sash with the fire kanji on his waist. Team 10. My name is Asuma Suratobi and I'll be your sensei. Chapter 4. The Decision. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto. There will be a rather large author's note at the end of the chapter talking about the pairings and story progression. The newly formed Team 10 was walking alongside his new sensei, each jonin had the right to choose his team meeting point. Asuma opted to have the team first meeting at his favorite restaurant. Yakiniku Q, a Korean barbecue restaurant. The walk was uneventful, Shino didn't felt the need to talk about anything, Asuma was silently studying his team, and Naruto was busy carrying the still passed out Hinata. As they finally reached the restaurant Hinata finally woke up, this time Naruto making sure to not make eye contact with her, so she wouldn't faint again. The team was eagerly welcomed by the owners, who Naruto and Shino noted to be closer to Asuma. As they sat down onto the table and placed their orders, Asuma finally decided to start with the proper introductions. Like I said earlier, my name is Asuma Suratobi, and I'll be this team sensei, now to properly introduce yourselves, I'd like to know your name, age, likes, dislikes, hobbies and dreams to the future. As the team leader I'll go first. My name is Asuma Suratobi and I'm 27 years old. My likes include barbecue, my family and a certain woman. My dislikes are people without morals. My hobbies include shogi and sometimes reading. My dream to the future is to serve the village well and hopefully start a family. You next. He said pointing to Hinata. My name is Hinata Haikta, I'm 12 years old. My likes include my family and as someone. Hinata said turning towards Naruto, who didn't notice. My dislikes are bullies and the cage bird seal. My hobbies are training and a bit of gardening. My dream to the future is to prove myself to the ones I love and hopefully abolish the cage bird seal. This certain someone seems to be Naruto. I hope this doesn't interfere with the team dynamics. Asuma noted. Thanks Hinata, next. He said pointing to Shino. My name is Shino Aburam and I'm 12 years old. My likes are insects in my clan. My dislikes are people who harm insects. My hobbies are collecting and studying insects. My dream to the future is to discover new breeds of insects. Shino said in a monotone almost emotionless voice. This kid only thinks about insects. Asuma, Naruto and even Hinata thought collectively. Thanks, now Blondie, you're next. My name is Naruto Uzumaki and I'm 12 years old. My likes are my precious people, Training and Raymond. My dislikes are the civilian council and arrogant people. My hobbies include gardening and fine literature. Naruto said, referring to the Icha Icha series, what caused Asuma to chuckle. Naruto, after reading the book merely for sex ed purposes, really started to enjoy the series, there was smut in fact, but aside that the book included romance and a bit of adventure. Naruto even carried a copy alongside his backpack, although he used a black cover to not be labeled as a pervert. Not that he didn't enjoy the more explicit parts, but he decided not to share his admiration with the others, making him what people would call a closet pervert, my dream is to become a powerful shinobi, capable of protecting the village, and hopefully help Kinohamaru become Hokage. A very noble goal indeed Naruto, thanks. Now Asuma said adopting a serious tone. I must inform you that even if you graduated from the academy, it doesn't mean that you'll become genin. There's a final test, with a success ratio of only 33%. What I mean is that from the 27 graduates only 9 will be able to pass. Shino remained stoic, Hinata seemed extremely nervous, and Naruto looked emotionless. Shinobi rule number 1. A shinobi must never show its true emotions he kept repeating to himself. That being said you are dismissed, tomorrow at 7am you'll meet me at training 14 for the test. As the genin were leaving, Asuma overheard Naruto muttering a everything will be fine to his teammates. Ordering sake, Asuma recalled the events from yesterday, when his father announced the teams. Flashback start. The Sandame Hokage was a brave man, who fought in all the three great ninja wars, he was the professor, the Kami no Shinobi, due to his mastery of all the five nature transformations. Still he was afraid, today he was announcing the genin teams to the council and to his jonin. The council room was full, the clan heads, sitting to his right. Inoichi Yamanaka, Chmzai Akimichi, Shikaku Nara, Tsuma Yuzuka, Hiyashi Haika and Shibi Aburam. 
the civilian council sat to his left and finally, in his front the elders and Danzo, the old warhawk. Standing onto the back of the room the Jonin, Kurinai and Kakashi included. Harizen knew that Asuma was probably on his way too. I called you here to submit the graduating teams. He said in a serious tone. Theme 7. Sasuke Chiha, Sakura Haruno, Kiba and Yuzuka. Sensei. Kakashi Haddock. Any objections? Tsum and Kakashi raised their hands. Tsum? I believed my son was going to be put on a tracking team. I decided to give Team 7 more presence, with Kiba tracking possible threats, besides Kakashi specializes in the use of Ninkin and will be able to teach him a thing or two. Tsum just shrugged. Makes sense I guess. Now, any objection on this team Kakashi? No, but I believed I asked for Naruto Uzumaki as well. In the background some members of the civilian council began the sporadic hostile speech against Naruto, but they were quickly silenced by the killing intent coming from Kakashi and the Hokage himself. Yes, but I decided to assign him to another team that will put his abilities in full use. Hiruzen said, throwing I'll further explain that later look to Kakashi. Team 8. Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka and Choji Akimichi. Team Sensei is Kurunaiki. Objections. This time Kurunai raised her hand. Hokage Sama whilst I don't openly oppose to training this team, I believe I personally asked for Hinata Haika to be on my team. Yes Kurunai, you did, but I've opted to place Hinata under a sensei I believe can help her skills more than you do. Kurunai looked sad, but nodded in understanding anyway. Finally Team 10. Naruto Uzumaki, Hinata Haika, Shino Aburam. Any objections? Hiruzen asked, carefully not mentioning that Asuma was going to be the sensei. The room exploded in uproar as the civilians started to demand that Naruto shouldn't become a shinobi and that he should be put to death. They were once again subdued by the killer intent from the Hokage, Kakashi, Kurinai and some of the clan heads. Okage-sama that was Hiyashi Haika who's this team sensei. The room quieted for a bit, clearly curious about the name. Yes, I'd like to know that too. Shibi said in the stoic emotionless Aburam tone. Well, the sensei for the Team 10 is Hiruzen said sweating a bit and carefully putting himself behind Kakashi, should Kurunai had a fit of anger. We. Suddenly, smoking a cigarette, Asuma entered the room. Quickly scanning the room, the bearded Jonin saw the woman he loved the most, the woman that he abandoned seven years ago. Kurunai was still beautiful as he remembered. Said woman was looking at him gasping, like she saw a ghost. For one second, that seemed to last forever, their eyes locked, and suddenly it was just Asuma and Kurunai, ignoring the entire world around them. However one of those smug civilians decided to ruin the mood. Asuma-san, good to see you're back, could you please convince your father that the demon brat shouldn't become a ninja, and should be put to the knife instead? Sighing, Asuma stole one last glance to the still dumbfounded Kurunai, before releasing a blast of killer intent directed towards the councilman. As from now on I'm the Jonin sensei of Naruto Uzumaki, so if any of you refer to him as the demon brat or any other pejorative names, actually if any of you even dare to look at him at the wrong way, you won't answer to the Hokage, you'll have to settle things with me. Am I clear? The counselor could only nod and ask to be excused since he wet his pants. The Ashi Haika was the next to speak. Okage-sama I'm not opposed to the presence of Uzumaki-san in my daughter's team, but I'd like to ask why you put such team together. Well Haika-san, Hinata is a close-range fighter, whilst Shino is a medium-long-range one, Naruto can hold his own at both close, medium and long range, but his strong point is the medium range. By putting those three together with Asuma as sensei I created a strong defensive unit where each member's strong point would cover the other weaknesses and also assigned the best sensei I could find. While I understand Hinata and Shino are heirs and are expected to focus on their clan techniques, Asuma can help Hinata with her tojutsu, and his mastery of Ptah ninjutsu can help Shino dispersing his insects. Also there's another reason, but I'd like to the members of the civilian wing to leave first. Okage-sama, we have the right to a councilwoman started, but quickly was silenced by the Hokage. This is shinobi matter, so your presence is no longer required, so, leave or you'd rather be escorted by the Anbu. As the civilians begrudgingly left the room, the Sandame proceeded to speak. The final reason is Naruto Uzumaki, since I'll be giving a description of his techniques I figured out it would be better to expel the civilians that could sell or even give for free this information to the enemy. One week ago, Naruto Uzumaki completed his first official mission, at A ranked 1, consisting of the capture of an enemy spy that was acting as a teacher at the academy. The details of the mission and the identity of the spy are classified for security measures. Not only Naruto completed the mission, but he also showed extremely calm and professional behavior, making important decisions on the fly and always considering the best of the village. He can use Katen as good as Sasuke Chiha can and has shown some proficiency on Kenjutsu. However his natural affinity lies with Ptan release, this being the reason I assigned Asuma with him. 
As you know, wind release is extremely rare in Kanoha, where in the recent history only four people were capable of using I. Me, Dansm, Asuma and the late Yandame. Pertaining elemental interactions, Tan is weak against Katen, but is strong against Raiden. Gumo is notorious for their employment of Raiden, so by properly training Naruto with Tan, we could have a defense against Kumo should they attack. Also by teaming him up with Hinata, who already suffered a kidnap attempt from Kumo, Naruto can provide her some extra protection, considering she'll be performing missions outside the village. By the time Hiruzen finished his speech, the shinobi clans were pleased with the team arrangements and actually positively impressed by Naruto's skills. Asuma was making his way towards the exit when he was stopped by Kurinai, surprise gone from her face replaced by sheer coldness. Saratobi san Hinata Haika has serious confidence issues and as her jonin sensei, you're expected to help her overcome those issues. Don't fail her, otherwise I'll have to use that jutsu. Asuma expression quickly turned onto a terrified one. Kurinai you can't be serious, you can't use that jutsu on me. Try me. She said before vanishing on a shunshin. Hiruzen, who couldn't help but eavesdrop the conversation, noticed his son's terrified expression and asked. What is that jutsu Kurinai was talking about? Father, that jutsu is the only N1 SSS rank in jutsu in history, don't ask me about it. Kurinai used it on me when she caught me peeking at another woman's boobs 10 years ago, let's just say that I still have nightmares. He said, shivering as he remembered that jutsu. Flashback end. Well, now the fun begins, he said as he left the restaurant. Naruto was making his way towards his apartments when he noticed the door was open. Something is wrong. As he entered the apartment, readying himself for a fight he felt a familiar presence behind him. You know kid, I'm not a fan of cleanliness, but I think you should really clean your apartment. Naruto turned out to see Asuma, smoking a cigarette, as always. Asuma sensei, I think you should stop smoking, I'm not a specialist, but I believe this smoke can really fuck your lungs. As a shinobi we rarely live long enough to die of lung cancer, also I coat my lungs with chakra. Asuma replied shrugging. I see, so any particular reason you decided to invade my apartment? No, just felt like it, now walk with me. The duo walked until they reached a small park, Asuma then stopped gesturing towards a bench. Now for our talk he said, sitting beside Naruto. Naruto, my father talked a lot about you, actually you are the reason I decided to take a genin team. Naruto couldn't help but open a wide grin. That being said, I could only teach you if I've taken the entire team, but I don't agree with that. You're the best shinobi in this class, even better than Sasuke, so it would be a waste of time if I decided to teach Hinata and Shino. Thankfully I've came up with a solution. Hail the exam tomorrow, then I'll take you as my only apprentice, I promise you that you'll be stronger than you've ever dreamt of. Naruto stood there looking at Asuma, maintaining a motionless facade. So what's your answer Naruto-kun? Fuck you. Tomorrow I'll kick your ass, and then I'll report you to the Hokage for even suggesting me that. It doesn't matter if you're his son or Konohimaru's uncle, tomorrow I'll show you no mercy, and when I'm finished you wish you never left the capital. Is that so? Asuma asked with an amused smile. Your choice sealed your fate. He said before disappearing. Training Ground 14 was basically a grassy plain with some trees and training dummies around it. Basically it provided a lot of open space, whilst clearly lacking commodities. Naruto reached the area at 7 am sharply, only to find that Hinata and Shino were already there. Am I late? Actually no, we both decided to show up early. Shino explained. You guys are nervous too right? The duo just nodded, Naruto the proceeded to take his Icha Icha from the backpack and started to read it, sitting under a tree. Five minutes later, clearly bothered by the silence, Naruto decided to rejoin his teammates. Look guys, we really don't know each other well, but right now we need to cooperate. Asuma is strong and as a gen and our only shot at beating him is a good strategy and teamwork. I agree, so what we're going to do? Shino asked. Let's get to know each other abilities, I'll start. Unknown to them Asuma was sitting on a tree, watching the conversation. I've seen everything I needed to see. My ability as the use of the Jikan to close Hinata was interrupted by the sudden appearance of Asuma, who stood there stone-faced and surprisingly not smoking a cigarette. Are you ready to the test? He asked impassively. Naruto looked towards his teammates who nodded to him, before responding. Yes we are. Asuma then lit up a cigarette and smiled. You pass, congratulations. What? Was the collective yell of the group. Chapter 5. Tulips. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto. As promised, the second part of the chapter, it was supposed to be longer, but I decided to end it with a cliffhanger, so apologies in advance for my evilness. This chapter has a brief fight scene between Asuma and Naruto, and a nary no moment. Also, please check the in in the end of the chapter. Asuma then lit up a cigarette and smiled. You pass, congratulations. What? 
was the collective yell of the group. Simple, you passed my test. What? But how? Naruto asked, still on guard. Let me clarify things for you, yesterday we talked, what I asked of you. I failed the test intentionally so you would take me as your apprentice. I asked this question to each one of you, so when Hinata and Shino refused and you said, in your own words, fuck you, the first part of the test was over. During a mission the enemy, or even a set ally, can approach you with various kinds of offers. Wealth, power even your own life to give you a few examples. When you refuse personal offers in the favor of the unity of the team, you prove to be real shinobi. Asuma said, before taking a drag of smoke from the cigarette. Listen kids, a team is stronger as its weakest link, if any of you accepted my offer I'd fail the team. I won't be taking a team that has an uncommitted member, during combat this could mean our deaths. The genin seemed to accept the explanation, as Naruto then raised a hand. Sensei you said something about first part of the test, what was the second part about? The second part was about your willingness to work together, when you all accepted that you were facing an enemy stronger than you could either attempt to push your limits and risk death in return of recognition, or you could accept your flaws and work with your teammates to survive. Needless to say that the second option was the correct. Now, I will spar each of you individually so I can measure your abilities, I suggest you paying attention to the movements and skills of each teammate, so you could familiarize yourself with him when we go for team training. The first one to spar Asuma was Shino, he attempted several movements using his kickage, but Asuma used Futon and Jutsu to properly repel them. Then, noticing that Shino was starting to show signs of chakra exhaustion, Asuma quickly changed the combat to close range, where his Tajutsu easily overpowered a defenseless Shino. The next spar was against Hanada. Opting to see the Haika Eris proficiency at the Jiken, he started a Tajutsu match. Hinata showed to be talented with the Jiken, but Asuma noted that her defensive instance was weak, probably due to Hinata's physical complexion that enhanced her flexibility and speed in exchange for strength and resilience. Observing that it was clear that Hinata wasn't physically able to use the traditional instance of the Haikta, where rigidness was prioritized over the natural adaptability Hinata had. I'll need to talk with Hiyashi about this later. However the spar Asuma was looking forward the most was against Naruto. He heard great things about the boy and was itching to confirm if those are indeed true. Naruto readied himself, analyzing his opponent. His Tijutsu is super strong, he uses Futon and Jutsu, so my Katen may be able to defeat him. Naruto leapt backwards, adjusting to a mid-range fight, before flashing hand signs and calling his Jutsu. Katen. Enden, fire release. Flame bullet. Five medium-sized bullets were making his way towards Asuma, who performed the Katen. Karak Enden, fire release. Fire Dragon Flame Bullet The flames turned into three fire dragons who dispelled Naruto's flame bullets and charged forward, making Naruto leap upwards to dodge the flames. Too slow. Asuma said appearing in front of Naruto who, in airborne, could do nothing to evade the punch in the gut. Ah Naruto said crashing on the ground. Quickly rolling sideways to avoid a axe kick, Naruto performed the Katen. Nkakak no Jutsu, Fire Release. Great Fireball Technique. Asuma, who didn't have the time to use a jutsu to avoid the fireball, jumped out of the way of the attack, only to be greeted by another end and ride onto his face. Thinking onto his feet, he performed a seal-less kawarimi, hiding into the trees and unleashing a barrage of shuriken towards the genin. Using his natural speed and his acrobatic abilities, Naruto managed to avoid the barrage. Throwing a kunai in the direction where the shuriken came from, Naruto forced Asuma to leave his position, landing in front of Naruto. Your ninjutsu is good kid, now let's see your tajutsu. He said readying his stance. Naruto nodded before entering a defensive stance. Asuma charged forward, delivering a power blow, hoping to get into Naruto's guard. The genin sought off that and opted to dodge instead of parrying or blocking the blow. For the next five minutes, they spared Asuma relentlessly attacking and Naruto doing his best to not get hit and looking for any openings that Asuma could provide, but he found none. Flawless, is that what a jonin is like? Naruto was brought out of his musing as Asuma's fist connected to his gut, sending him to the ground. Naruto stayed down for about 10 seconds before jumping back to his feet. You know kid, you won't win if you don't attack. Naruto glared Asuma with an impassive face, but deep inside he knew the bearded jonin was right. Readying himself, he charged forward, attempting to hit Asuma with leg sweeps and uppercuts. However the jonin was good, and as Naruto overextended a jab, which Asuma easily avoided, the blonde saw his guard wide open and lost the air of his lungs as a elbow strike from Asuma sent him crashing backwards. Asuma could say he was impressed, he wasn't pulling any punches, unlike he did when he sparred Hinata and Shino. He glanced at the boy who was slowly getting up. Said boy then got into a different stance, his feet were parallel and pointed towards the diagonal, there was no open base, his knees weren't flexed, and his hands formed a defensive position at his abdomen level. 
Shortly this wasn't any Tajutsu style Asuma saw on the leaf, it, at first glance, looked extremely carefree, but Naruto seemed to know what he was doing. So Asuma charged forward, delivering a telegraph punch to test the genin reaction. Naruto moved his neck, avoiding the punch before giving a kick to Asuma's extended arm. The Jonin studied the blonde movements, and he was sure that every martial artist would wince in seeing his movements. Fights like a thug. He thought. However even not following any school of the martial arts, Naruto's tojutsu was surprisingly effective. The main focus of the tojutsu was clearly evasion and opening counter-attack points, however, instead of forcefully exploiting those counter-attacks, Naruto would settle for slowly mining his opponents, using blows to the joints to restrain movement and hitting certain areas in repetition. Asuma presumed that Naruto developed this style by his own, an impressive feat for someone his age, but he could see movements that looked similar to the Hibi, Snake, Nken, Strong Fist, and Suken, Drunken Fist, styles. Okay Naruto, that's enough, go sit with your teammates. As Naruto properly sat down, Asuma looked down to his team and couldn't help but smile, they did much better than he expected. But I'd like to say I'm proud of all of you, I was able to properly evaluate your skills, and I tell you, I'm pleased with what I've seen so far. Of course there are some minor things that need work, but if we develop as I expect I dare say that in a month we will be going to our first C rank mission. Now for things that need work on. First with you Hinata. Your tojutsu is good, but I believe that if you somehow let loose and focus on fluidity instead of rigidness, you would be able to get better results, I'll visit your father to ask for permission to change the jiken to fit your body type. For now I want you to spar against other styles than the haika, shino is a good start, since your skill levels are similar, however I believe that after some time you'll be able to take on Naruto. At the mention of taking on Naruto Hinata developed a small nosebleed that wasn't noticed by the other members. H hi sensei. Shino, your use of kick -hk is masterful, however I would recommend you to further improve other areas of your training. I'd start with tojutsu that is your weak point, but I'd also look at some non aburam ninjutsu. Okay. Finally you, Naruto. I dare to say you are already a chunin level, but you need more versatility and coverage to your ninjutsu. Your tojutsu is a rather intriguing prospect that benefits from the lack of formal direction, however I'd like to help you to add some fundaments to improve it. Finally, Jinjutsu well I won't lie to you, your Jinjutsu will never be on the same level as your Tujutsu or Ninjutsu, you have a good chakra control considering your reserves, but I believe that you'll never get past B rank Jinjutsu. However you are easily a target for Jinjutsu, so I'll also teach you how to dispel high level ones. However skill wise I believe you're the strongest rookie in this year's graduating class, despite of what others try to say. Asuma then proceeded to make a training schedule, he would take in the week to drill the team and teamwork and tactics, also each member would have a day where they would individually work with Asuma, whilst the others sparred against each other and completed personal assignments given by Asuma. Finally the last weekday would be reserved to the team spend in their clan compound, learning their personal techniques, as Naruto didn't have a clan it was decided that he would use this final day to work with Asuma. Weekends were reserved for mild personal training and mainly recuperation, since Asuma assigned individual physical trainings that would be difficult for the first few weeks, considering they were transitioning from academy students to fully-fledged shinobi. The trainings would take place in the afternoon, since the team would use the mornings to complete the ranked missions. During Mondays, Hinata would train with Asuma, Tuesday was Shino's and Wednesday Naruto's. Thursday was reserved for team training. Finally Friday was the day the team members would work individually with their clans, but for Naruto, it meant another session with Asuma. Two weeks later Naruto could state that he was extremely happy in being trained by Asuma. The Jonin always made him work extremely hard, and Naruto knew that it was his obligation to work even harder than expected, because he doubted there would be any other Jonin so willing to teach him like Asuma was. Training with a former guardian three times per week, as opposed to his team's two, made him closer to his sensei as compared to his teammates. Asuma was extremely honest and clearly stated that should he fall on a mission, Naruto would have to take the responsibility to keep his team safe. As for training, the guy was a perfectionist, during tojutsu practice he would make Naruto repeat the same moves a hundred times if he believed they weren't good enough. However, Asuma really outshined when teaching Futon nature transformation, his specialty. When Naruto found out about his Futon affinity two years ago during training with Abisu he wasn't very happy, he believed that it would be useless in a village that was famous for his employment of Katen, who held a natural advantage against Futon. Boy, he was wrong, it took Asuma two hours and a demonstration with his chakra knives to make Naruto idea about the Futon change completely. Now Naruto was extremely glad to have a wind affinity, considering the plethora of uses this nature could have on the battlefield. Naruto's training in Futon manipulation was only beginning, as he had yet to properly cut a leaf using his chakra. Naruto was brought out of his musings when he reached his apartment. 
Asuma gave the team a day off tomorrow as he was pleased with the team progress. Looking to his coffee table, he noticed the two scrolls above it. Katen. Correctin, fire release. Fire dragon bullet and cage bunch and no jutsu, shadow clone technique. Those two scrolls were actually forgotten since he had been busy with training after graduation. Naruto knew it wasn't the brightest of the ideas to attempt to use a fire ninjutsu inside his apartment, so he decided to attempt the second scroll. He read the jutsu description that the Hokage provided. The ranking clone technique that was developed by Taburama Senju. The Nidame Hokage. This jutsu creates solid clones that would only dispel at the user commands or after being hit. This is considered a kinjutsu because of the sheer chakra usage, should someone attempt to perform this jutsu without proper chakra reserves, he could risk chakra exhaustion and possibly death. Upon dispelling, the clone memories are transferred to the original, making this technique highly suited for information gathering into enemy territory. Naruto's eyes nearly jumped out of his sockets. This jutsu was created by the legendary Taburama, possibly his favorite Hokage, and could create solid clones. Naruto was too excited that he never bothered to read the death risk or the memory transfer part, he just jumped into the proper instructions for chakra molding and hand signs. Forming a cross-shaped sign, Naruto properly molded his chakra before yelling. Page bunch and no jutsu. Suddenly 25 copies of Naruto appeared. Poking a clone to see if he was indeed real, which he was Naruto was amazed. I must talk with Hokage Jiji. Hey, boss. One of the clones called. Yeah? What should we do? With a mischievous grin and a bossy voice he began to give orders. Clean the house, polish the glasses, and dinner better be ready when I get back. He said before heading towards the exit. As he was making his way towards the office, he passed by a certain flower shop. Ino Yamanaka was bored, she couldn't believe she would say that, but she missed the academy. Nothing wrong with her teammates, Shikamaru and Choji had their flaws, a whole lot of flaws, but they were reliable. Also she enjoyed talking with Kurinai, she was a strict teacher, but everything she did was for her best, Kurinai approached her on her first day as a genin to try to pry off her fangirlish tendencies, and whilst Ino didn't abide it of them completely, she was beginning to see that there was life beyond Sasuke. Not seeing the Achiha since graduation definitively helped too. But she was bored, why? Lack of eye candy. Choji and Shikamaru were far from attractive. Working in a flower shop was another complication, every attractive guy that set foot there was already taken or was planning on asking a girl out. Ino sighed, it wasn't like the boy of her dreams would suddenly walk through the door. Ring. The bell announced another customer. Welcome to Yamanaka Flowers, how can I help you? She said not taking her eyes off the magazine she was reading. I'd like to Ino. Ino jerked her head upwards to just come face to face with Naruto. In Ino's opinion, Naruto was far from ugly, actually when she first saw him four years ago at the academy, she thought he was kind of cute. Ino, during the time she was still friends with Sakura, would grade a boy's look, Sasuke obviously was A+, Naruto by this time was graded by the girls as a B, which was above average, having Kiba, Shino and Choji in the class didn't do any wonders for the average rating. Even when she and Sakura became rivals, Ino continued with her habit. When Naruto showed up in the genin assignments with a totally different look, his grade just went up to A, but now, standing face to face with the boy Ino realized she made a mistake because Naruto Uzumaki was definitively A+. Naruto, what you doing here? She asked trying to suppress a blush. Well I'd like to buy a few potted plants for my apartment to add a bit of green. Oh I see, anything in particular? No, do you have any suggestion? Yes, I'll show you. Naruto decided to buy a few potted plants, following Ino's recommendations. They talked about a lot of things, and Naruto surprisingly enough enjoyed the conversation with a girl that in his own opinion was superficial. So Ino, how are the missions going? Well D ranks are boring, today we had to chase the daimyo's wife cat. Tora. The demon cat. Naruto questioned with Ino giggling at the nickname. Yes. How long did you take to catch him? Two hours. Two hours. Naruto yelled. Yes, is that too much? Ino asked confused by her fellow blonde's sudden outburst. No, is too little, when we chased that demon, Naruto said emphasizing his last word we took whole five hours to capture him, and that damn cat tore my jacked, broke Shino's sunglasses and destroyed Asuma's cigarettes. People say about the kickbee, but Tora makes it look like a simple bug. Naruto, that's no fun, some of my clansmen died during the attack. Ino said in a scolding tone. Naruto then realized that he probably crossed a line and was about to apologize when he heard Ino laughing out loud. You should have seen your face, priceless. Naruto first frowned clearly no happy about being tricked, but soon found himself staring at the smiling Ino. Her smile is pretty, makes you want to protect her. You have a beautiful smile. Naruto noted, causing a light blush to appear on Ino's cheeks. Naruto then noticed a pale pink flower on a basket near the counter. 
Feeling surprisingly bold he took the flower, tulip as he would recognize some time later, and handed it to Ino, causing her to blush bright red. A flower for a beauty. What Naruto didn't know is that offering a tulip was a declaration of love. Ino was trying her best to control her emotions, a perfectly fine boy gave her a tulip, and as she looked at him, she felt pulled towards his blue eyes. Naruto was having the same thoughts as he glanced and couldn't help but admire the girl in front of him. As the world stopped around them, they leaned forward. Chapter 6. Trouble with Shadow Clones. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto. Tech end of the chapter for author notes. Ino was trying her best to control her emotions, a perfectly fine boy gave her a tulip, and as she looked at him, she felt pulled towards his blue eyes. Naruto was having the same thoughts as he glanced and couldn't help but admire the girl in front of him. As the world stopped around them, they leaned forward. Same time, at Naruto's apartment. The army of 25-5 clones was doing their chores. Considering Naruto didn't clear the house for well, well, since he moved in, they had a huge amount of work to do, so the clones divided themselves in a group of 20, responsible to clean the house and a group of 5, to cook Naruto's dinner. This last group decided to prepare a homemade ramen, as Naruto read that instant meals were bad for his health. The clone was responsible to boil the water whilst another one cut the veggies. When the water finally boiled, the clone decided to take the kettle with the water to the sink, but failing to notice that a broom was lying on the floor. As he tripped on the floor and sent a wave of boiling water towards the clone that was cutting the veggies, he could only yell. Watch out. The clone that dutifully worked in his duties turned his head curiously, and then his expression changed into horror as the wave went towards him. As the inevitable happened, the clone dispelled, sending his memories to the original. Back at the flower shop. As they leaned closer, they didn't form any thoughts nor said any words, the moment provided an opening for the kiss to happen, and both decided to go with the flow. In a matter of physical time, not even five seconds passed by, but for the blonde duo, it felt like hours. Each centimeter was a mile and each second was an hour, as their noses almost touched. Ino had her first rational thought, she was going to kiss Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto however didn't had any thought, he was moving in pure instinct, he actually never kissed a girl, but it felt like his body was moving on his own. He didn't care that he was going to kiss a girl who spent the last four years frowning over Sasuke, nor that he actually had any experience of kissing, other than the rather graphic scenes that he read in his black book. However instincts kicked once again when he received the memories of his dispelled clone. Confused by the unfamiliar sensation, Naruto misread the situation, assuming that the memories were actually happening, so he quickly hugged Ino protectively, as he looked around for any signs of danger. After clearing his mind and finally realizing that the memory had something to do with the clones he left at home, he sighed, only to find he was still awkwardly hugging Ino. Releasing the hug, both blondes looked at each other, with blushes evident on their faces. As both of the genins broke eye contact and Naruto decided to end the rather awkward situation. Well, I gotta see the hokage, goodbye Ino-chan. Shit, did I just say Ino-chan? He said before quickly making his way out of the shop. Goodbye, Naruto-kun. Ino said to nobody in particular, muttering the last part. Before reflexing on what just happened. Naruto and I almost kissed, but I like Sasuke-kun, right? I should be glad we didn't kiss, but why I feel so empty. So what's your opinion about your team so far? Well. Since Asuma returned from the capital, Hiruzen decided to make an extra effort to reform bonds with his younger son. The Sandane would make time to play shogi, their favorite pastime activity since Asuma was a kid, and sometimes, like today, they would have dinner together at the Siratobi's compound. A quiet and peaceful dinner. Hey old man. That was just interrupted by Naruto. Sighing the Hokage got up his seat on the table and opened up the door to Naruto. Hello Naruto, any particular reason to interrupt my dinner? Naruto then scratched the back of his head and showed some embarrassment before muttering an apology. Well, forget that now, what brings you here? I completed the cage bunshin. He proclaimed with proudness in his voice. That is Asuma, who was still sitting on the table hearing the conversation, ears perked up. The cage bunshin was a great jutsu and could help the team a lot. That's great kid. The heavy smoker said, appearing beside his father. Hi Asuma-sensei. The blonde greeted. Well, congratulations Naruto, the cage bunshin is a B-rank jutsu and mastering it is a hard task. The sandame spoke up. Yes, but there's something I noticed, before going out I left some clones at home doing some chores, then suddenly I felt like I shared one of those clones' feelings and senses. Actually, Naruto you probably received his memories. Seeing the genin puzzled expression the Hokage explained further. When a clone dispels they share their memories with the original, making it a great technique for information gathering, but the scroll I gave you said that didn't it? Well, I can not have it when you physical clones. Naruto said clearly embarrassed about making a fool out of himself in front of the Hokage. 
the Hokage and his son chuckled at Naruto's embarrassment, and Hiren couldn't help but feel a bit of sad that, despite acting so mature for his age, Naruto was still a kid. The village made him that way with their lack of compassion, Minato I'm sorry. Well Naruto, the cage bunshin is a good technique to have in your arsenal, it can be used for both combat and espionage. Asuma said. Also, there's a good usage of the technique for training, although it is only reserved for chakra pool powerhouses like you. Tell me Naruto, how many clones did you make? Hiruzen asked. 25, but I was low on chakra. Well, since clones transfer their memories to the original you can use them to speed up your training. Hiruzen said, chuckling at Naruto's amazed smile. The level of chakra you put on the clones dictates their durability, although they will always disperse on their being hit. Your concentration also plays a huge role in this, as it can lead to clones performing more complex tasks. Wow Naruto said in awe, before turning to his sensei. Hey Asuma sensei, I know you gave me a day off tomorrow, but what about some training camp? Well, if I refused you'd keep pestering non-stop, so let's do this, meet me tomorrow at the gates, pack for three days, because we're going on a training trip. Naruto met with Asuma at the gates of the village. The Jonin decided that he and Naruto would camp and train onto a mountainous region nearby the village. Asuma and the Hokage decided that this area was the best for Naruto training, because of the isolation of the area, as they didn't want the villagers to bother him or Danzm to get a full look at the boy's abilities. The mountains provided a physical challenge for Naruto to overcome, and the lack of facilities was a plus as well, as Asuma believed that by the end of the three days Naruto would be able to perform some low rankings win ninjutsu, and knowing the blonde a trail of devastation was most likely. As they reached the destination, Asuma ordered Naruto to make 20 clones to work on the leaf cutting exercise, whilst they sparred in a tojutsu battle. Asuma was still adapting to fight Naruto's Tojutsu, and while he already knew that he was supposed to expect the unexpected, it always surprised him the ways the blonde could avoid point-blank strikes and properly counter-attack. Naruto still hadn't landed a single hit on his sensei, but he felt that every day he was getting closer, today he almost got Asuma by pump faking a left kick, only to use a roundhouse kick jumping mid-air with his right leg. The pattern on those spars was always Asuma getting into a fence whilst Naruto defended himself, looking for any openings to exploit. Sadly for him the jonin gave none and proceed the onslaught for hours, until Naruto moves became sloppier due to the muscular fatigue, and Asuma finally landed a striking blow. Good moves kid, you are improving faster. Asuma commented. Thanks, Asuma sensei. Hmm. Kid, mind if I ask you something a bit personal? No. It's about your tojutsu style, it's different from everything I've seen my entire life. I assume that you invented it right? Yes. Any particular reasons? The academy tojutsu didn't fit you. Actually I never was taught at the academy. Seeing Asuma's puzzled expression Naruto elaborated further. Well, since you just got back it's no wonder your father didn't told you yet. You know about my tenant right? As Asuma nodded Naruto continued. People mistook me for the kickbee and treated me like shit since I could remember. At the academy it was no different, the teachers hated me, and with exception of Iruka sensei they constantly sabotaged my training. When the Hokage discovered what was happening he was enraged and wanted to fire the entire teacher corps. However this day I decided I wouldn't take shit from anyone any further, so I threw myself in training. Hokage-sama was kind enough to hire Ibisu to help me with that, however I wasn't content, I wanted more. So I decided that I would show everyone at the academy that I didn't needed them, so I studied harder on my own. As things improved my ego grew bigger, and I shamefully admit that I became arrogant to point of purposefully picking fights, so I could hurt people. This style I developed because bullies from the academy and some stupid civilians would try gang up on me despite the Anbu vigilance, and since I was so proud of myself, I didn't felt like asking for help every time. I knew that if I was hit I would get beaten, so I trained myself to avoid any kind of damage and exploit their mistakes made in blind rage against the demon brat. Since I was smaller than them I decided to use quickness and agility to overcome their superior strength. I grew even more arrogant to the point that villagers truly feared me, and I felt like enjoying hurting them. But then it happened. Naruto said sadly. It was my 10th birthday and this was a rather touchy subject. When I was younger the Anbu instructed me to avoid going to the streets so the villagers wouldn't try to hurt me. But this day I felt different and I decided to go buy some ramen, it was my birthday after all. As I walked in the streets I felt proud of myself, the villagers couldn't hurt me anymore. Then this drunken guy came and started calling me names, offending me, nothing I've already heard before. Usually people would ignore him, but I felt restless, as if I wanted people to really fear me. I backed the guy at an alley and we fought, after 5 minutes I have had defeated him, but I didn't care. He was already on the verge of unconsciousness, but I kept hitting him. When the Anbu came I've already broken almost every bone in his body, and he was just a bloodied mess then. 
Next day I was called by the Hokage, and he used a invisibility jutsu to take me to the hospital. The guy survived but he had severe internal bleeding, and the constant hits I've dealt to his head put him on a coma state. But this didn't change my mind, he deserved it. But then I saw her wife sitting by his bedside and crying. Then it hit me. If I kept causing pain and suffering to the other even though they deserved it, I would be what they called me. A demon. So from this day onwards I decided that I'd wear the mantle of a demon, so they would leave me alone, but I would never become one, because if I did, everybody that mistreated would have won. Even today I get a look or two of fear, but apparently the Hokage did his best to cover up the story. There are some dumb villagers who still try to corner me on an alley to finish what the Yandame started, and even if I have all the rights to kill them in self-defense I don't, because I think I might be taking a child of a father, making a widow or making a child fatherless. So I settled for just breaking some bones. I won't lie, it feels somewhat pleasant to see they get what they want, but I will never again take joy from hurting the others. Because I promised myself I wouldn't, and I never break my promises. Chapter 7. First of many. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto. Check the end of the chapter for author's notes and the identity of the third main girl. The three days trip was over, and Naruto and Asuma were back in Konoha. The blonde progressed greatly, completing the first stage of the wind nature transformation, the leaf cutting, and the second stage too, that consisted on splitting the leaf in a half. Naruto also took advantage of Asuma's presence to finish the katan. Correctin, fire release. Fire dragon bullet, the jutsu on the scroll that was gifted by Ibisu and got to learn the katan. Karakendon, fire release. Fire dragon flame bullet, another beerank ninjutsu. The Karakendon and the Karakendon were somewhat the same technique with some few notable differences. The first technique consisted basically of a flamethrower taking the shape of a dragon. The second technique consisted on expelling from two to four dragons made of fire and controlling them to slam against the opponent, this technique spending more chakra and having a slightly longer range than the first one. However, the most notable change to Naruto's ninjutsu repertoire was finally adding some Futon ninjutsu onto the mix. Asuma taught Naruto C rank techniques. The Futon. Datapa, Wind Release. Great breakthrough a jutsu that consisted on expelling a gust of wind from the mouth and that with enough power and chakra could go as far as destructing a large tree and the Futon. Rapsham, Wind Release. Gale Palm, that consisted on creating a gale by clapping the user hands together. Asuma promised to teach Naruto some B rank ninjutsu after he finished the third and the fourth stage of wind transformation, but for now he decided to focus on the rest of its team as he felt that they should progress at the same rate as the blonde and Chikriki. Naruto totally agreed with that, and whilst working on the third stage of its wind release training, that consisted on cutting a rock by channeling wind infused chakra in it, he made time to help his teammates improve their own skills. Naruto worked with Shino on developing some cooperation techniques using his newly acquired Futon attacks alongside Shino's Kikage. Naruto and Shino never were close in the academy, however in this one month they worked together, they developed a respect for each other. Naruto at first thought of trying to have Shino to open up, leaving his stoic demeanors, but then he realized that he shouldn't try to change people for his liking, and made his best to interact with Shino without intruding too much. Hinata was probably the teammate that mostly benefited of Naruto's help. He helped the Haika heiress to improve her tojutsu, but most importantly her confidence and self-stem. Hinata was still shy and would stutter when nervous, but didn't act like she would faint every time she saw him. Naruto knew of Hinata's crush on him and made his best to not hurt the girl's heart by acting oblivious so the Haika heiress could get over him on her own. During his spars with Hinata, Naruto was able to grasp the basics of the Jiken, going as far as bastardize the style to create one of his own so he could improve Hinata's training even further. Naruto started to see his team as family because never in his life he would spend so much time with the same people. He saw Asuma as the closest he had of a father, the Jonin really took interest on him and made sure to teach Naruto as much as he could. His teachings weren't just focused on shinobi skills, but life itself, he would gladly speak of his time serving under the daimyo at the capital and the different parts of the world he got to know. He also told Naruto about his longtime friend Chiriku, a ninja monk that alongside him helped to prevent a coup d'etat against the Hokage. They would constantly play shogi, with Naruto winning 20 matches as opposed to Asuma's 17. Hinata was the younger sister Naruto never had, and he as any good bigger brother, was fiercely protective of her. He would constantly encourage the girl's efforts and took a big disliking to the caged bird seal as he learned about the rift it caused on the girl's family. After being told by Hinata about the Kumo kidnapping incident he saw Hinata in other eyes, he always believed the Haika clan to be arrogant, with Hinata being an exception to that rule, but now he realized that even being noble and wealthy, Hinata had to face her own hardships. Finally Shino Shino was kind like a distant cousin that you see once a year on family reunions, but family nonetheless. 
Inada was ecstatic about her team. Asuma was a strict teacher, but never belittled her in favor of his naturally more talented teammates, a thing that always happened on her clan when she was compared to Hanabi or Niji. Besides that Asuma also helped her with her tojutsu as they developed an experimental variation of the jiken that gave Hinata more fluidity. Hinata preferred this new style over the strict traditional form that her clan practiced, but Asuma instructed her to not reveal this new form to her clan yet as it was still a work in progress. Shino was someone Hinata could really relate to, and strategy-wise they would always be paired together as they covered each other weaknesses. But for Hinata the most important thing was to be alongside Naruto, she really loved him, and she felt that as long as she was with him, she would be safe. She didn't have the courage to confess her feelings for him, but for now she was happy to be just friends with him. Putting romantic feelings aside she was always impressed by Naruto's legendary work ethic, the blonde was the first one and the last one out, always undergoing voluntary training, and yet he wasn't power hungry, as he more than once decided to skip his personal training sessions to help her and Shino with their training. Shino, despite his stoic behavior was actually very pleased with his team. He knew teamwork and chemistry had a great deal of importance and his team coexisted well. He had combination moves with both his teammates and sensei. He was actually fond of Naruto and Hinata as they didn't look down at him due to his kickage, nor tried to change his personality. Asuma was a good sensei too, always teaching him something new. Asuma was happy with his first month as the Jonin sensei of Team 10. Shino and Hinata despite their shyness were attentive and always respected him. He kept finding new methods to train them as he was still learning how to train his genin properly. But working Naruto was a different thing, the blonde was always pushing his limits harder and harder to help his teammates and village, and Asuma felt proud to be a part of his development as a shinobi and as a person as well. Seven years ago, when he left Konoha after breaking up with Kurenai, Asuma envisioned himself becoming a loner as he threw away his only shot at love. Now, seeing Naruto achieve by himself things that were denied so harshly by the village, on his own Asuma felt himself being able to try to make up for his actions in the past. He started spending more time with his family and more than once contemplated asking Kurenai for forgiveness, but he was still afraid of being rejected to do it. Naruto was like a son he never asked to have, but now he couldn't be happier to have him in his life and he hoped that in the near future, his son little brother would be his best man should Kurenai accept him back in her life. Team 10 was on Hokage office for an important milestone, today was their first C-ranked mission. The one-month training program by Asuma clearly prepared the team well for anything that should come. Actually the team was long ready for C-ranks, but Asuma decided to hold this up as he feared that by having two clan heirs, one of them being already a target for an abduction attempt, and the Kikbijinch Kriki could always attract undesired attention. Asuma walked into his father's office, with his team trailing him, Naruto leading the genin, with Shino in the middle and Hinata behind. Team 10 reporting for a C-ranked mission. Asuma said in a formal tone. Very well, hmm, let's see what we have him perfect. Hiruzen said whilst looking for a C-rank and pile of scrolls. As he opened the scroll, he began to read it aloud. Well this is a formal mission request by the Merchant Guild of Konoha, apparently they want a team to head to Tenzaku town to pick some important merchandise and bring it back to Konoha. What kind of merchandise? Asuma asked. Pine silk. Well, we accept the mission. Asuma said before turning to his genin's pack for two weeks, better to be safe than sorry, and meet me at the northern gate in three hours. Naruto quickly put together his things on a backpack in less than one hour. With his free time he decided to stop by at the Higurashi's weapons to see if his custom-made katana was ready. Naruto didn't focus that much on kenjutsu training during the last month, but he kept doing the exercises that Yuga Menheid assigned to him, so he felt that having the katana ready for his first mission outside the village was a good idea. As he reached the store he was greeted by a girl wearing a Chinese-style dress with brown hair styled in two buns. Welcome to Higurashi's weapons. How may I help you? The girl asked. Hello I came to see if the order I placed is ready. Okay, what's your name? Naruto Yuzumaki. I'll go check at the storage, feel free to take a look at the products while I'm gone. Naruto then looked around, he had to admit that Higurashi's had an impressive display. Since he had already bought his outfit and weapons during his last trip, he didn't felt like replenishing his stocks, but decided to buy some explosive tags and flashbangs just in case. As he kept glancing around at the store he noticed some slightly different kunais, similar in shape when compared to the regular kunais, but the metal it was made shined a lot, unlike the blackened metal of the regular version. Those are chakra metal kunais, you can flow your chakra through it to add its properties, although you need to know nature transformation to do so. The girl came back, holding a katana. I do. Naruto replied much to the girl's surprise. How, aren't you a freshly minted genin? Yes, but I had a good teacher. Naruto said smiling. I wish I had your luck. 
the girl said sighing. Why? Your sensei is a total lazy ass who usually arrives four hours late to the training. Meanwhile a silver-haired Jonin sneezed while reading his orange book of smut. I think I forgot something, is it my team training? Nah. I would remember that. He mused before resuming his reading. No, but I wish my team was a bit more normal. I have the two weirdest guys of Kanoha in my team. Is that bad? Naruto asked with a look of solidarity. As in a clue, a boy around Naruto's age appeared. The boy was well Naruto couldn't find a word to describe the boy. He had huge black eyes, a black shiny bowl cut hair. And wore a green spandex. However his most prominent detail were his eyebrows. They weren't some eyebrows, they were the eyebrows. Yash Tenten, would you like to join me on my youthful laps around the village to brighten our flames of youth? Not now Lee, I'm busy. Tenten said giving a this answers your question. Looked to Naruto who just winced in sympathy. Sorry, I believe we weren't properly introduced Lee said looking to Naruto. I am Kanoha's beautiful green wild beast rock Lee. Lee exclaimed giving his nice guy pose. Naruto sweat dropped at Lee's antic before compassing himself, nice to meet you, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. He said extending his hand, offering Lee a handshake that the genin quickly accepted. Tell me Naruto, would you like to have a youthful spar? Lee asked only to be cut off by Tenten. Don't bother him Lee she said before turning to Naruto and handling him the katana. Your order is ready, it's a very beautiful sword, you use kinjutsu. Yes, I've been training under Hei Chekn for a month now. Naruto explained. I see, would you like anything else? Actually yes, I will take 10 explosive tags and 3 flashbangs, also I will buy a set of the chakra metal kunais. Naruto said before turning to Lee. About our spar, I'm leaving on a mission today, but we should definitively spar sometime, I usually hang around training ground 14, so you can always look for me there. Naruto said before paying Tenten and leaving the store. Naruto was admiring his new katana while he waited for his teammates, he was early since he packed up quickly. The katana had the traditional shape, the only notable thing being the slightly dark colored metal the sword was made, being a mid-tone between black and gray. The handle was a simplistic black one, with bronze engravings. Basically a good katana, that stood into the effective but not flashy category. He was brought out of his musings as he heard a male voice. Yo, Naruto. Naruto turned only to see Choji waving to him. Hey Choji what's up man? Naruto greeted his friend back with a fist bump. Nothing too much man, just coming back from a deer rank outside the village. I see, so where's Shikamaru and Ino? Choji opened his mouth to speak only to be interrupted by an angry female voice. Choji. You left us behind damn it. That was Ino and she was angry, however after noticing who Choji was talking to, she quickly changed tones. Hi, Naruto-kun. She said in a much calmer and sweet voice. Hi Ino-chan. Naruto greeted back causing his fellow blonde to blush with his use of the affectionate term. Ino Choji you guys are troublesome. Shikamaru said, joining the group, before turning back to Naruto. Sup Naruto. He said greeting the blonde in another fist bump. I'm fine, how you doing Shikamaru? Naruto asked. Tired, those missions are troublesome. The Nara proclaimed causing the rest of his team and Naruto to sweat drop. Shikamaru, everything is troublesome to you. A raven-haired woman in her mid-twenties said. She was extremely beautiful, and her red eyes were extremely exotic. And you are. She said turning to Naruto, actually she knew who he was, but she asked him out of formality. Naruto Uzumaki, pleased to meet you. Naruto said offering his hand for a handshake. Nice to meet you Naruto, I'm Kuranaiki, Jonin sensei of teammate. She introduced herself, shaking Naruto's hand. Hey Naruto what are you doing later? Kuranai said she would treat us to lunch would you mind tagging along? Ino asked please say yes. I'd love to Naruto began causing Ino's face to lit up, but I can't I'm leaving for a mission today. Naruto explained. Oh I see Ino said sadly. Naruto you're on Asuma's team right? Kuranai asked, proceeding as Naruto nodded in affirmative. How are you finding things so far? Kuranai whilst still angry at Asuma, still had a great deal of curiosity and even some leftover admiration to the bearded Jonin. Oh, it's great, Asuma sensei is great and my team is nice too. Actually today we're leaving in our first C rank. Naruto explained happily. Kuranai raised an eyebrow at this aren't you a bit inexperienced for this? Usually Jen and teams wait two months before going for C-Ranks. That was more a statement than an actual question. Yes, but Asuma-sensei trained us, and Naruto said, before flashing one of his rare true smiles, causing Ino to blush and Kuranai and the rest of the team to smile too. He said he trusts us. I see, good luck your mission then. Let's go team. Kuranai said. Choji and Shikamaru again fist bumped Naruto and Ino, much to her team, and Naruto's surprise gave him a quick kiss on the cheek, causing Naruto to blush, before whispering for him to be careful. 
The trip to Tanzaku was quite uneventful, as the group didn't had any problems of any sorts. When they reached Tanzaku town the genin were marveled, it was smaller than Kanoha but much more vibrant. After helping the Ichirakus and buying his shinobi apparel, Naruto still had about 30,000 rim to spend, so he decided to go shopping. It's not every day that he had the chance to visit a different town. At Kanoha civilian merchants would always overprice or even refuse to sell to him, he countered that using his modified version of the hinge that made superficial changes instead of casting just an illusion. However he still disliked buying from the civilians as he would be funding their business. So with his day off, as the silk shop that had the merchandise was already closed, Naruto decided to buy some civilian and some formal outfits, as he might need them sometime. He was making his way towards the shopping district when he stopped dead in his tracks at the side of a casino. Might as well give it a try. Naruto said before entering the building. One hour later and 40,000 rim richer, Naruto finally went shopping. He bought some plain civilian clothing and two fine yukatas. While still having 50,000 rim to spend he decided to shop for gifts for his team. For Asuma he got a cigarette pack imported from the land of tobacco, for Shino a highly updated bug encyclopedia, and for Hinata a big supply of gourmet cinnamon buns. After giving his presents to his greatly pleased teammates, Naruto revised his accounts. He, despite all his spending, closed the day with a 5,000 rim profit. Well I guess I should gamble more often. Team 10 was midway on his way back to Konoha. They've been traveling for four days so far, carrying the silk back to Konoha. The silk was distributed on three large metal crates that the Naruto clones dutifully carried. They weren't having problems so far as the presence of a Jonin strongly discouraged common bandits to attack the team. However they were being followed. Naruto, Hinata, Shino, keep the crate safe. Asuma said before a group of 20 men jumped from above, circling the team. Using his censoring abilities Naruto said. The four in front of Asuma are Chunin level the rest is low genin. Well leave the Chunin to me, Hinata, protect the crates, Naruto and Shino, please subdue the others. As the team took their stances the fight begun. Hinata dutifully knocked out two bandits that were stupid enough to attack first. Asuma kept the four Chunin at bay, whilst using an opening to knock one of them out. Meanwhile Shino and Naruto's bug dispersion combo made short work of eight unaware bandits. As the fight progressed, Team 10 clearly was sailing away as the victors, the crates remained untouched, and the genin level bandits were knocked out. Of the four Chunin, only one remained and he was being cornered by Asuma. You know, I may have lost the battle, but I'll win the war. He said throwing a handful of dirt into Asuma's eyes, temporarily paralyzing the Jonin. Then instead of fleeing he charged quickly at Hinata, with full intent to kill. Naruto watched the scene and realized that Hinata wouldn't be able to defend herself in time. He also couldn't get in the way as he lacked speed. Stealing his resolve he knew he could only do one thing to save Hinata. Getting one of the chakra metal kunais from his pouch, he infused wind chakra onto it before throwing towards the enemy charging at Hinata. The speeded up kunai pierced the enemy neck, leaving a gruesome trail of blood on the ground. The bandit was dead before his body hit the ground as his neck was severed by the attack and his head was almost detached from the rest of his body, courtesy of the wind nature chakra. Asuma recovered to see a paralyzed Hinata looking away from the deceased enemy body, clearly shocked. Shino stood far from his two teammates still shaken by the turn of events and his inability to help his teammates. Finally Naruto was kneeling on the ground staring at the enemy. Asuma deduced that this was his first kill due to his shaking. As Hinata started crying and Shino went to console her. Asuma heard muttering from Naruto. I killed him I killed him I killed him, Naruto kept repeating as in trance. Asuma quickly disposed of the bodies with a fire jutsu before glancing at Naruto again. Naruto's clearly shaken by his first kill, I wish I could talk to him now, but we're still on mission. Hey Naruto, walk with me for a second. Asuma said as the team finished reporting the success of its first C rank mission to the Hokage. Okay Naruto said in a motionless tone. It hurt Asuma to see the kids had to kill so early and yet more how killing affected Naruto's confident personality. The duo kept walking, ignoring the hated glares from the villagers. Asuma was beyond angry with the way the boy he began to see as his son was treated, but Naruto didn't seem to care, he was already used to it and still thinking about his first kill. They stopped at the Hokage Mountain Monument, sitting at the Sandame's head. So, how are you feeling? I killed him Asuma-sensei, I took a man's life, I perhaps made another innocent kid an orphan like myself. Yes you killed him, but you liked killing him. No. Naruto said with a weak voice tone. Naruto, we're shinobi, we have to kill, it's part of our job, you did well. But still, I've been unable to sleep for two days, every time I close my eyes I see him. I didn't even knew his name. Well when I first killed I was your age, I threw up and had nightmares for weeks. Feeling sadness for taking a life is what makes us human not tools. Asuma explained. 
but still Naruto tried to argument. Naruto, if you didn't intervene Hinata would be dead, so tell me. Who deserved to die? A 12 years old girl on her first mission outside the village or a bandit who wouldn't feel guilt in killing. Naruto's answer both surprised and made his Jonin teacher proud. Nobody, nobody deserves to be killed without having the chance to defend themselves. Asuma smiled at the genin. But the world isn't fair, remember that. He said before taking a pause. The greatest shinobi in history had to kill, but how they handled it made them really special. The Sandane Rakage, hailed as the strongest rakage in history, once fought 10,000 enemies alone for three straight days. He died in this battle, but probably killed thousands of enemies that day, why he kept fighting after killing all those people, because by doing this he allowed his comrades to live. The Yandame Hokage was the biggest hero of Konoha, during the Third Shinobi War, he decimated the forces of Iwa in a single day. I knew him, and he wasn't a sadistic killer, so why did he abide of his values and kill thousands of shinobi, making orphans and widows in the process? Because it was needed, by doing this he prevented his fellow Konoha shinobi from dying unnecessary deaths. Naruto, the world we live is sick, I don't expect you ever to feel happy to kill someone despite they deserved or not. But we're shinobi, we must always think of the best for our village. Death and killing are always part of shinobi life, how you deal with those feelings determines your value as a shinobi and determines the success of your missions. If you fail a mission you would be putting your friends and your village in danger, so you must get used to killing so your precious people wouldn't die. I'm not saying that it's right or ideal, but this is how we are forced to live. Naruto was speechless at Asuma's display of wisdom, all he said was true, and whilst he killed an enemy he did that to protect Hinata. If Hinata was killed he would be even more shaken. Naruto then realized, there are no ideals on the shinobi world, and the only way you have to keep yourself and your loved people safe is to be getting stronger. So he vowed to become the strongest and perhaps someday change the dynamics of the world. He was broken off of his thoughts as Asuma patted his shoulder, offering him one of his cigarettes. As Naruto raised an eyebrow at the jonin, he explained. Old enough to kill, old enough to smoke. Naruto knew this was the way Asuma had to bond with his important people, and knowing he was one of those important people made Naruto happy. Thanks, Asuma-sensei. Naruto said before accepting the cigarette and displaying his first sincere smile since he came back. What if Naruto create harem with Hinata and Ino council bashing, and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.